Hi there, are you the owner of this seafood restaurant? Yes sir, how can I help you today? I'm a fisherman and I've got some fresh catches to sell. Would you be interested? Absolutely. What kind of fish did you catch? I've got some nice red snappers and big groupers. Sounds great. How much are you willing to sell them for? How about $10 a pound? That seems fair. I'll take all of them. Perfect. By the way, have you considered adding any new dishes to your menu? Actually, I have. Do you have any suggestions? You can try making fish tacos or grilled fish with lemon butter sauce. They're both very popular these days. Thanks for the suggestions. I'll definitely consider them. You know what else would be great? Lobster rolls. That's a great idea. I've always wanted to add those to the menu. It's a proven hit. People love them. I'm sold. I'll order some from you when you catch them. Sounds good. You won't be disappointed. It's always great to meet a fellow fisherman who's also a foodie. Yeah, it's the best of both worlds. I get to fish and eat seafood all the time. You're living the dream. Thanks. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. See you soon. It's such a lovely day for a walk in the park, isn't it? Yeah. The sun is shining and there's a cool breeze blowing. So, what have you been up to lately? Anything exciting? Well, I started learning how to play the guitar. That's fantastic. Maybe you can play some songs for us later. Sure. I'll practice more and become a rock star someday. Haha, <laughs> that's the spirit. What else do you want to learn? I want to learn how to cook too. So I can make delicious meals for us. That's a great idea. I'm looking forward to trying your cooking. Thanks, Dad. How about you? What's new with you? Just the usual work stuff. But I did try something new last weekend. Oh? What was it? I went bungee jumping. Whoa, that's so daring. Did you have fun? Yeah, it was an incredible experience. I felt like I was flying. I'm too scared to try that. Maybe I'll stick to playing the guitar. Haha, <laughs> everyone has their own thing. As long as you enjoy it, that's what matters. Definitely. Hey, look at that cute dog over there. Can we go pet it? Sure thing. Let's go say hi to the furry friend. Good evening, welcome to our restaurant. My name is Kate, and I'll be your server tonight. Are you dining with us for the first time? Yes, I am. I've heard so much about the cuisine here, and I'm excited to try it out. Well, you're in for a treat then. We have some really amazing dishes on our menu. Can I start you off with some drinks? Yes, I'd like a refreshing cocktail, please. Surprise me with something. Excellent choice. How about our signature hurricane cocktail? It's a popular drink in New Orleans, and it's really delicious. Sure, I'll give that a try. Great. And for your appetizer, would you like to try our crab cakes? They're a local favorite. Sounds perfect. I'm a big seafood fan. Excellent. And for your main course, have you decided what you'd like? Hmm, I'm torn between the shrimp etouffee and the jambalaya. Which one would you recommend? Both dishes are really tasty, but if you're looking for something spicy, I'd go with the jambalaya. It's a classic New Orleans dish. Sounds like just what I need then. I'll go with that. Great choice. And finally, for dessert, would you like our famous bread pudding or our rich chocolate cake? I'll have to go with the chocolate cake. I'm a chocolate fan. Perfect. I'll put in your order right away. And please let me know if you need anything else or have any dietary restrictions that we should be aware of. Thanks so much. I appreciate your help. It's my pleasure. I hope you enjoy your meal. Hey, B. How's the IT department doing today? Hi there. Not bad, but we could definitely use some help with optimizing internal resource allocation. Ah, uh, I see. What kind of resources are you thinking about specifically? Well, we've been struggling with managing our multiple databases and ensuring that our servers aren't becoming overloaded. I hear ya. Have you tried using any software to help with that? We've utilized a few programs, but we're always open to trying new solutions. Any recommendations? Definitely. There's a really great program called XResource that I've used in the past. It's perfect for managing multiple databases and servers while preventing overload. That sounds promising. How would it integrate with our current system? It's a pretty seamless integration. 
we just need to do some initial setup and then it should essentially take care of itself. Great. That would save us a ton of time and headache. Absolutely. Plus, it allows for automatic alerts if anything starts to go awry, so we can quickly address any potential issues. Perfect. And what about managing other internal resources like project deadlines and departmental budgets? For project management, I highly recommend Trello. It's super user-friendly and allows for great collaboration between team members. As for departmental budgets, we could look into some custom software specifically tailored for your needs. I've heard of Trello before actually. And that sounds like a good idea for the budget management. How long do you think it would take to implement these solutions? For X resource, it really depends on the size of your operation, but I'd estimate about a week of initial setup and then minimal maintenance from there on out. As for the budget software, we'd need to discuss your exact needs and work with developers to create a custom program, but it could take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. That's not too bad at all. Thanks for your help, A. No problem, B. It's always great to collaborate and find ways to optimize our resources. Absolutely. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Hi there. Welcome to the Great Barrier Reef. My name is Peter, and I will be your diving instructor for today. Hi, Peter. Nice to meet you. I'm Tom, and I'm excited to explore the reef. Well, you're in for a treat. Let's first make sure your gear fits properly. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Now, let me introduce you to some of the sea creatures you might encounter underwater. Have you heard of Nemo? Of course. The cute little clownfish, right? Yes, that's the one. There's also the impressive humphead wrasse and the majestic manta rays. Wow, I can't wait to see them all. All right, Tom, we're about to go underwater. Let's take a deep breath and dive in. Guess this is amazing. The water is so clear, and there are fish everywhere. Yes, it's a whole different world down here. Let's swim over to that coral formation. Whoa, there's a sea turtle. It's so graceful. Yes, they're amazing creatures. Just remember to keep a safe distance and not touch anything. Got it. Hey, do you have any funny diving stories to share? Hmm, one time a seagull stole my sandwich while I was underwater. Laughs that's hilarious. It was quite a surprise. Time sure flies underwater. I can't believe our session is almost over. Yes, unfortunately, it's time to head back to the boat. But we can always come back for more. Absolutely. Thanks for the unforgettable experience, Peter. It was my pleasure, Tom. Safe travels. Hey there, welcome to our farm. You must be the truck driver here for the cattle. Yes, I am. Nice to meet you, I'm the one in charge of transportation. Perfect timing. We're just about ready to load up our cows and send them off to market. That's great to hear. How many heads of cattle are you shipping today? We've got around 30 cattle this time. Would that be a problem for your truck? Not at all, we're equipped to handle up to 50, actually. So, how's the weather looking for today's drive? It's sunny and hot, but we've got an air-conditioned trailer for them. We want to make sure they arrive safely and in good condition. Safety is always a top priority, especially when transporting animals. Don't worry, we'll make sure they're well taken care of during the trip. That's good to hear. By the way, do you have any tips for us when it comes to choosing the right market to sell our cattle? Well, there are many factors that can affect the price of your livestock, such as their age, weight, and breed. But don't worry too much, I'm sure they'll fetch a fair price. Thanks for the advice. Speaking of prices, we were hoping to get a good deal for our cattle. Any chance you can help us negotiate with the buyers? Sure thing, I'll do my best to ensure you get a fair price for your animals. Let's work together to make this a successful transfer of your cattle. That's great to hear. It's always reassuring to know that we have reliable partners in this industry. Thanks for your help. No worries, it's my pleasure to work with professional and proactive farmers like yourselves. Let's get those cows loaded up and on their way. Hi, Mr. B. How have you been? Hey there, hey. I've been doing great. Thanks for asking. What brings you to my office? I just wanted to check in and chat about my progress in school. I feel like I'm doing well, but I always value your perspective. Of course. Let's review your grades and any feedback your teachers have provided. Hmm, looks like you're maintaining straight A's. Yeah, but I am struggling a bit in math. Any advice? Sure thing. Have you tried some extra practice problems or talking with your math teacher for some personalized help? 
Actually, I've been using some online resources and Khan Academy to review topics, and it's been helpful. Fantastic. That shows initiative and resourcefulness. Keep it up. Thank you. Another thing, I've been feeling a bit overwhelmed with workload recently. Do you have any tips on managing stress? Definitely. It's important to prioritize your tasks and make a schedule to manage time efficiently. And don't forget to take breaks throughout the day to recharge. Got it. Thanks, Mr. B. You always provide great advice. You're welcome. Anytime you need to chat, come by my office. Hello there. Can I help you find anything in particular today? Yes, I'm looking for a new dress for an upcoming wedding. Do you have any recommendations? Absolutely. What style are you leaning towards? We have a variety of options, from classic to modern. I'm thinking something flowy and floral. Do you have anything like that? Yes, we have a beautiful selection of maxis in floral prints. Let me show you. Oh, I love this one. Do you have it in my size? Yes, let me check in the back. In the meantime, can I show you any matching accessories like shoes or jewelry? That would be great, thank you. How about these strappy sandals and a simple gold necklace? They would complement the dress perfectly. Yes, I'll take them both. Do you have a fitting room available? Absolutely, right this way. And don't forget, we have a discount coupon for new customers like yourself. Thank you for letting me know, I'll definitely use it. You've been so helpful, I appreciate it. Of course, it was my pleasure. If you need anything else, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your purchases, and have a great day. Hi there, B. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, thanks. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. So, today we're going to talk about the word reputation. Have you heard of it before? Yes, I think I have. But I'm not sure what it means exactly. That's totally fine. Reputation refers to the way that other people view or think about someone or something. For example, a company might have a good reputation if people think they make high-quality products and have good customer service. Oh, I see. So it's kind of like a person's image or standing in society? Exactly. It can refer to an individual's reputation or the reputation of a group or organization. And it's important because having a positive reputation can lead to more trust and respect from others. That makes sense. Is there anything else I should know about the word? Well, it's often used in phrases like damage your reputation if someone does something that makes other people think less of them. And there's also the saying actions speak louder than words, which means that your reputation is based on the things you actually do, not just what you say you'll do. Ah, uh, got it. Thanks for explaining, eh? Of course, happy to help. And remember, it's always important to try to maintain a positive reputation in both your personal and professional life. Hey, have you heard about the different certification authorities like Microsoft and Cisco? Yeah, sure. They offer a variety of certifications. Which one are you interested in? I'm looking into getting certified in Microsoft Office. Hey, that's a great idea. Microsoft Office is used in almost every office worldwide. It's definitely a worthwhile certification to have. Which certification do you think is the most valuable for networking? I'd say the Cisco Certified Network Associate, CCNA, certification is the most valuable one. It's known for providing a strong foundation in networking fundamentals. Have you taken any certification exams before? Yes, I've taken the Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate, MCSA, exams before. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. What do you think makes these certifications so valuable? Well, when you have a certification, it shows potential employers that you have the knowledge and skills to perform the job effectively. It gives you a competitive edge over others who don't have the certification. That makes sense. Do you have any tips for preparing for certification exams? Yeah, sure. Make sure to study thoroughly and practice with real-world scenarios. Also, use resources like practice exams and study groups to help you prepare. I agree with you. Do you think these certifications are essential for career growth? I wouldn't say it's essential, but it definitely helps set you apart from other candidates. Plus, having a certification shows that you're committed to your profession and are dedicated to continuously improving yourself. Thanks for sharing your insights with me. I'm excited to prepare for my certification exam. No problem. Good luck with your certification journey. I'm sure you'll do great. Hey B, have you heard about that new machine learning engineer we just hired? Yeah, I have. I'm excited to work with him on improving our search engine's efficiency. Me too. 
Have you had a chance to chat with him about how he thinks we can utilize machine learning? Not yet, but I was hoping to bounce some ideas off of him. I was thinking maybe we could use it to improve our natural language processing abilities. Ooh, that's a great idea. I was also thinking we could use it to personalize search results based on the user's previous searches and preferences. That's a smart idea too. With machine learning, we could have the search engine learn from each user's behavior and cater to their individual needs. Exactly. And maybe we could even use it to predict what the user is searching for before they even type it in, based on their past behavior. Yes. That would definitely impress our users and give us a competitive edge. I can't wait to see what kind of magic we can create with machine learning. Agreed. Let's sync up with the new engineer and get started on turning these ideas into reality. Sounds like a plan. Let's get to work. Hey, Dr. B. Glad you could make it out to the farm today. No problem at all, Farmer A. So, what kind of animals do you have here on your pasture? We have a mix of cows, pigs, and sheep here on the farm. They've been feeling a bit under the weather lately, so we called you in to help us out. Ah, uh, I see. Well, let's get started with the checkup then. How about we start with the cows? Sure thing. They're over in that paddock there. I'll bring them over to you. Great. Now, let's see. Hmm, they look healthy for the most part, but it seems like they might have a bit of indigestion. Have you been feeding them anything different lately? Actually, we've been giving them some new grain that we ordered in. Maybe that might be the cause of it? That could be it. I recommend cutting back on the amount of new grain you're giving them and see how they react. As for the other animals, let's take a look at them one by one. Sounds good to me. Let's start with the pigs next. All right, let's see. Oh, these pigs are looking great. Good weight, no signs of illness, and their coats are shining. Really? That's great to hear. Maybe we're doing something right after all. You certainly are. Keep up the good work. Lastly, we'll take a look at the sheep. Okay, let me bring them over to you. Here they are. Hmm, it looks like some of them might have a bit of a cold. Have you noticed any coughing or sneezing among the herd? Now that you mention it, I have heard some of them coughing. What's the treatment for that? It's nothing too serious, just a little common cold. I'll prescribe some medication for them that should clear it up in no time. Thank you so much for your help, Dr. B. We really appreciate it. Of course, Farmer A. It's my pleasure to help out the community. If you have any other concerns in the future, don't hesitate to give me a ring. Hey there. Let's talk about the timeline and milestones for the system development project. Sounds good. So what's the current estimate for completion? We're hoping to have a working prototype in about six months. Wow, that's ambitious. What are the major features we're planning to implement? The main focus is on user interface and database integration. We also have some specific features requested by the client. Got it. And what are the deliverables we need to hit along the way? We'll need to present a design document for approval, then start working on the front end and back end separately. How do we plan to manage the project timeline? We'll be using Agile methodology and working in two-week sprints to stay on track. That's a smart approach. Do we have a dedicated team for this project? Yes, we'll be pulling in several developers and a project manager to lead the effort. Great. How are we planning to handle any unforeseen issues that might come up? We'll have a risk management plan in place and we'll address any concerns during our daily stand-up meetings. Sounds like we're in good shape. What's the deadline for completion? Our goal is to have the final product delivered within a year. I think we can make it happen. Is there anything else we need to consider? We'll also need to think about testing and quality assurance as we move through the development process. Definitely. Let's make sure we allocate enough time for that. Any other questions or concerns? Not for me. Let's get started on making this project a success. Good morning, A. How are you doing today? Are we ready to make some delicious chocolate desserts? Good morning, B. I'm doing great, thanks for asking. I can't wait to start baking those famous Swiss chocolate cakes. Absolutely. I'll show you some of our best chocolate flavors. Do you have any in mind? How about we use some dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and white chocolate? I think that will make the cake perfect. That sounds heavenly. I'll get those ready for you. So, what's the secret to making a perfect chocolate cake? The key is to use good quality ingredients, in the right proportions, and bake it at the precise temperature. And also, you have to love chocolate. I couldn't agree more. It's like a work of art. 
Speaking of which, have you ever made the famous Swiss chocolate truffles before? Oh yes. They are one of my specialties. They're rich, decadent, and oh so satisfying. Perfect. We can serve them with the chocolate cake. I think they would complement each other well. Definitely. And maybe we could add some fresh fruits, like strawberries or raspberries, to the plate for some color. That's a great idea. Our customers will love it. I think we make quite a team, don't you? Yes, we do. We both share a passion for chocolate and baking. It's lovely to have a partner like you to work with. Couldn't agree more. All right, let's get baking and make those chocolate dreams come true. Hi there. Nice to meet you. I'm the backend engineer. Hello. Nice to meet you too. I'm the database administrator. It seems like we're both here to talk about how to manage a large amount of employee data. Yes, we are. It's a challenging task. But nothing we can't handle, right? Absolutely. Have you considered using a cloud-based solution to store this data? That's a great suggestion. But we also need to ensure data security and compliance with regulations. Definitely. We can use encryption methods and implement strict access controls to achieve that. Right. And we'll also need to account for scalability to accommodate future growth in staff numbers. Good point. Let's make sure to plan for that. But, we should also consider the user interface and ease of use for HR staff. Yes, of course. We want to make sure they can quickly and easily input and retrieve information. Agreed. And with automation and standardization of data input, we can reduce the chance of human error. Absolutely. Data quality is crucial. Speaking of which, have you considered data cleaning and deduplication processes? Yes, we can use algorithms and machine learning techniques for that. Sounds great. This collaboration is going to be a success. Absolutely. I'm confident we'll create a smooth and efficient employee data management system. Great. And I'm excited to work with you on this project. Same here. Thank you for your time today. No problem. It's been a pleasure. Have a good day. You too. Hey B, I'm so glad we're working together on this project. I think we can make an incredible online store that will blow the competition out of the water. Hi A, I couldn't agree with you more. So where should we start? Well, let's think about what features we want to include in the site. What do you think are some must-haves for a successful e-commerce site? Hmm, I think a clean and easy-to-use interface is essential so customers don't get frustrated and leave. Definitely. And I think we should also focus on creating a smooth checkout process so our customers have no issues making purchases. Agreed. What about product categorization and search options? Oh, those are also really important. We need to ensure that our customers can find what they're looking for easily. And let's not forget about the product images and descriptions. They should be crystal clear and accurate. Right. And what about reviews and ratings? I find those really helpful when I'm shopping online. Absolutely. They add credibility to the products and help customers make informed decisions. Hey, have you thought about incorporating social media share buttons? Great idea. Letting customers easily share their purchases on social media can create a viral buzz for our products. And we could also include a wishlist feature, so customers can save products for later. A wishlist is a fantastic idea. It's an excellent way to keep customers engaged and encourages them to come back for more. Should we also think about having a live chat feature or a customer support hotline in case customers have questions or concerns? Yes, we should definitely offer that. Providing good customer service is crucial nowadays. Totally agree. And what about mobile optimization? Most people shop on their phones these days. Exactly. We need to make sure our website is mobile friendly so customers can shop on the go. Wow, we've covered quite a lot already. I think we're off to a great start. Me too. I can't wait to start designing and bringing all these ideas to life. Wow, this temple is amazing. The view from up here is breathtaking. Yes, Kyoto is known for its beautiful temples and shrines, and this one is definitely one of the most popular ones. Did you know that this temple is named after the pure water that flows from the nearby hill? Yes, that's right. And it's said that drinking this water will bring good luck and health. I definitely need some good luck and health. Let's try it. Sure, let's go. Oh, and while we're at it, make sure to take some photos. Your followers on social media will love seeing this. Absolutely. Can you help me take some photos in different angles? Of course, I would love to. 
Just make sure that you tag the temple and include some interesting facts in your blog post. I will, for sure. Speaking of interesting facts, did you know that the temple used to be a site for divination? Yes, in the past, people would come here to have their fortunes told, hoping for good luck and success. That's so interesting. I'm so glad we came here. This will definitely be one of the highlights of my trip. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Kyoto has so much more to offer, so let's keep exploring. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Officer A, and I'm here to assist you in any way possible. Can you please state your name and current address? Good afternoon, Officer A. My name is John Smith, and I live on 123 Main Street. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We received a report that you were seen near the scene of a recent burglary. Can you tell me where you were at the time of the incident? Oh, I was just on my way home from work. I didn't see or hear anything suspicious. That's interesting. We have security footage that shows someone matching your description near the location. Is there anything you'd like to share with me? Chuckles, well, I do have a twin brother. Maybe it was him? Smiling, I see. Do you mind if we take a look at your ID and ask you a few more questions? Of course not, officer. I have nothing to hide. Can you tell me a bit more about your brother? Does he also live in the area? Yes, he does. We look very similar, but he has a small tattoo on his right wrist. All right, we'll keep that in mind. In the meantime, I'm going to need to ask you to empty your pockets and remove any metal objects. Smirks, you won't find anything incriminating, officer. Chuckles, I hope not. Let's head over to the processing area and we'll take care of everything. Sighs, well, this has certainly been an eventful evening. Smiling, indeed it has. But don't worry, Mr. Smith. We'll get to the bottom of this and hopefully clear things up soon. Hey, what's up man? I heard you're the AI guy in this self-driving car project. Hey, that's right. Nice to meet you. So, what's your role in this? I'm a software engineer. We're in the same boat, I guess. Absolutely. I'm assuming you've seen the mock-up designs for the car system? Yeah, I have. They look impressive. But how do we start building the AI system? Well, we have to start with the sensors first. Then, we can integrate the control algorithms, mapping software, and finally, the user interface. Okay, sensors. We need cameras, radar, LIDAR, and GPS? Exactly. Then, for control, we'll use a combination of Kalman filters and an extended Kalman filter. Got it. And for the mapping software, we can use a mix of SLAM and probabilistic approaches? You've got it. And for the user interface, we want to keep it simple so drivers can understand the self-driving modes. Yes, I couldn't agree more. We need a lot of testing, debugging, and calibration, right? You're speaking my language now. We have to test the frequency responses and calibrate all the sensors correctly so the algorithms can make good decisions. Yes, testing and calibration are critical. We also need to ensure the safety of our passengers. Absolutely. The safety of our passengers is a top priority. We have to account for all possible edge cases. Do you think we need to create a rule-based framework to handle edge cases? We could, but I think we can use deep learning to recognize complex situations and make appropriate decisions. You're right. Deep learning can handle all sorts of edge cases effectively. I think we should also develop a neural network that can recognize road signs and traffic signals. Yes, that would be a significant step forward. We can also use data from other cars on the road to boost the recognition accuracy. Awesome, I'm really excited about this project. We can change the world with this kind of self-driving car tech. Definitely. Together, we can make significant contributions to the field and create something truly revolutionary. Hey B, have you heard about the security team in the government organization? Yeah, you're talking about the information security engineer and the systems administrator, right? Exactly. I heard they're discussing how to establish an effective cybersecurity strategy. Oh, that's interesting. I hope they include some fun and creative measures to protect against cyber attacks. Like what? Well, for starters, a mandatory game of guess the password during employee orientations. Laughs, I like that idea. And they could also have a phishing scam challenge where the winner gets a prize. Yes, and they could create a hack-proof zone in the office where employees have to navigate different cybersecurity challenges. That's brilliant. As long as they don't make it too difficult, or else no one will even bother trying. Agreed. But it's important to remember that the best defense is a good offense, so the security team should work on implementing strong firewalls and regular software updates. 
definitely. And they should also make sure everyone has a strong password policy. Right, that's an absolute must. I'm feeling much better about the government's cybersecurity measures now. Same here. Let's hope they continue to keep our sensitive information secure. Good morning, Nurse B. Are you ready for our scheduled surgery today? Yes, Dr. A. I've prepared all the necessary tools and equipment for the operation. Excellent. You always make things easier for me. So, have you heard about the new hospital cafeteria? No, Dr. A. Is it good? Yes, it is. They have the best coffee in town, and their pastries are just heavenly. Oh, that sounds promising. I should check it out someday. Absolutely. But not during our surgery today. We need all our focus and attention. Of course, Dr. A. We can't let our patients down. Right. Speaking of our patient, are you familiar with his medical history? Yes, I am, Dr. A. I've reviewed his file thoroughly. Perfect. That makes things easier for us. Let's start the surgery, shall we? Yes, Dr. A. I am ready to assist you. Great. I always feel confident when I have you by my side. Thank you, Dr. A. Let's do this. All right then. Let's begin the operation and make our patient better. Hello there. Welcome to the Darwin Visitor Center. How may I assist you with your travel plans today? Hi. Thanks for having us. We're looking for some recommendations on what to see and do around Darwin. Great. Have you been to the Mendel Beach Sunset Market? It's a must-visit attraction and perfect for a sunset picnic. No, we haven't. That sounds lovely. What other attractions would you recommend? The Crocosaurus Cove is a popular one. You can get up close and personal with some of the largest saltwater crocodiles in Australia there. Wow, that sounds adventurous. How about something more laid back? You can take a relaxing stroll through the George Brown Botanical Gardens. It's free and offers a stunning showcase of flora and fauna. That sounds perfect. We've got little ones with us. Are there any family-friendly attractions? Definitely. The Wave Lagoon at the Darwin Waterfront and the Darwin Military Museum are great options that are sure to keep the kids entertained. Awesome. We're definitely adding those to our list. Do you have any recommendations for good restaurants? There are plenty of great options in the area, but you can't go wrong with the waterfront restaurants like the Wharf One and the Harbor Master. Great, we'll make a note of those. Thanks for all your help. Is there anything else worth seeing that we might have missed? The Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory is a fantastic attraction that showcases the cultural and natural history of the region. Sounds like a great way to spend an afternoon. Thanks again for your help. No problem at all. It was my pleasure assisting you. Enjoy your stay in Darwin. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 Privacy? Yeah, I actually just finished my certification exam for it last week. What do you want to know? Well, I have a bit of trouble understanding some of the concepts. Could you explain it to me? Sure thing. Basically, ISO 27001 is a standard that organizations can follow to ensure the privacy and security of their information. Okay, that makes sense. But what are some of the requirements for compliance? Well, there are many requirements, but some examples include having clear policies and procedures for handling sensitive information, regular risk assessments, and employee training on information security. I see. But what kind of information would be considered sensitive? Oh, any kind of information that, if lost or stolen, could harm an individual or organization. This includes things like personal information, financial data, and trade secrets. Ah, uh, got it. But do you think this standard is really necessary? I mean, can't companies just handle their own privacy and security? While some companies may be able to manage their own security measures, implementing ISO 27001 can provide a systematic approach to detecting and preventing security breaches. That's a good point. But what's the process like for becoming compliant? It can be quite rigorous and time-consuming, but the benefits definitely outweigh the costs. It involves conducting a risk assessment, implementing security measures, and undergoing regular audits to ensure compliance. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. But I guess it's worth it for the peace of mind and protection it provides. Absolutely. And if anyone ever asks if you're ISO 27001 compliant, you can proudly say yes. Hey B, have you considered using Kubernetes to deploy and manage the bank's applications in the cloud? Yeah, I have. But I'm also worried about the security aspect of it. What do you think? 
Well, Kubernetes has a strong security feature. It isolates each application in a container, so even if one application is compromised, it won't affect the others. That's a relief to hear. But what about the cost? Wouldn't it be expensive to use Kubernetes? Not necessarily. There are free and open source versions available too. Plus, it's more cost effective in the long run as it automates a lot of tasks, saving time and money. Hmm, that's good to know. Automation is always a plus. Yup, and speaking of automation, have you heard of serverless computing? Yeah, I have. It's where the cloud provider manages the servers, right? Exactly. It's a great way to reduce costs and improve scalability. The provider only charges you when your code is running. Nice, I like the sound of that. But what about the learning curve for our team? That's a valid concern. But serverless platforms like AWS Lambda make it easy to get started. You don't have to manage and provision servers, just upload your code and let Lambda handle the rest. Oh, that's cool. This could be a game changer for us. Yeah, I think so too. It's always exciting to explore new technologies and see how they can benefit the bank. Definitely. And we'll have to plan some time to train the team on these new tools. For sure. But first, let's grab a cup of coffee and celebrate our new deployment strategy. Sounds good to me. Hi there, I'm looking for a new pair of pants. Can you help me out? Absolutely. What kind of pants are you looking for? Well, I was thinking of something more casual, but still stylish. We have some great options in that category. Have you considered our chino pants? Hmm, I'm not sure. What's the difference between chinos and regular pants? Chinos are typically made from a cotton twill fabric that is lightweight and breathable, perfect for warmer weather. They also have a slimmer tapered leg for a more modern look. Sounds like just what I'm looking for. Do you have any colors other than khaki? Yes, we have them in navy, olive, and even a salmon color if you're feeling adventurous. I think I'll go with the navy. Do you have my size? Let me check. What size are you looking for? I think a 32 waist and a 32 inseam would fit me well. Great, we have plenty of those in stock. Would you like to try them on? Yes, please. Where can I find a fitting room? Right this way. And if you need any other sizes or styles, just let me know. These pants feel really comfortable. I think I'll take them. Excellent choice. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Actually, do you have any recommendations for a good belt to go with these pants? I would suggest a brown leather belt. It would complement the navy color nicely. Perfect. Can you show me some options? Absolutely. Follow me over to the accessories section. Good morning, this is Tower Control. How can we assist you today? Hi, this is the Control Center. We have a flight coming in and need to coordinate landing and taxiing. Great, what flight is it and from where? It's Flight 123 from Tokyo. Got it, we'll have the runway ready. How's the weather over there? It's a bit cloudy with some light rain, but nothing that should impact landing. That's good to hear. How many passengers are expected? The flight is expected to have around 200 passengers. Understood. We'll make sure they have a smooth landing and taxiing experience. Thanks for helping us out. Any updates on the departure flights? Let me check. Looks like the next two flights are on schedule. Perfect. Thanks for keeping us updated. No problem at all. Hey, have you heard the latest office gossip? No, what is it? Apparently, one of the agents had a pet snake in their locker. Laughs, wow, that's quite the surprise. I hope they kept it well hidden. No kidding. I can't imagine what would have happened if it had gotten loose in the building. Laughs, better not to think about it. Hey there, having any luck with the fishing today? Not really, I've been out here for a few hours and haven't caught anything yet. Yeah, it can be tough sometimes but you gotta be patient and persistent. I guess so. Do you come out here often? Oh yeah, almost every day. It's my favorite spot. It's a beautiful beach. I can see why you like it here. Definitely. Plus, the fish are usually biting. What kind of fish do you usually catch around here? All sorts, snapper, flathead, bream. Depends on the season. Cool. Do you have any tips for me? I'm still new to fishing. Sure, make sure you bait your hook properly and cast out as far as you can. And don't forget to reel in slowly. Thanks for the advice. I'll give it a try. No problem. Oh, look. I think you've got a bite. 
Excitedly, really? What do I do now? Just reel it in slowly and steadily. Don't yank the line too hard or you might lose the fish. Struggling to reel it in, this is harder than I thought. Laughing, you've got a big one there, buddy. Finally pulling in a large fish, yes. I did it. Impressed, nice catch. Looks like a snapper. Proudly, thanks. This made my day. Smiling, glad to help. Who knows, maybe you'll be a pro fisherman in no time. Laughing, that's the dream. Thanks for the fun afternoon, man. I might have to come back here again. Waving goodbye, anytime, my friend. Tight lines. Hey, what's up B? Have you been dealing with any DDoS attacks recently? Oh yeah, we had a big one last week. It was a real pain in the backside. Yikes, what did you do to mitigate the impact? Well, first off, we increased the capacity of our network to handle the increased traffic flow. Smart move. Did that work? It definitely helped, but we also implemented some filters to block the malicious traffic. Nice, so did that shut down the attack completely? Almost, but not entirely. We also had to tweak our load balancing algorithms to distribute the traffic more evenly. A little bit of everything then? You got it. We had to throw the kitchen sink at it. Haha, <laughs> sounds like quite the battle. It was certainly interesting. We were like war generals, strategizing and making rapid-fire decisions. That's a great analogy. How long did the attack last? It went on for about three hours, but it felt like an eternity. That's insane. Did you guys get any kind of warning? Nope, it came out of the blue. But that's why we have our systems and procedures in place. Absolutely. So, what do you think we could do to be proactive and prevent these attacks in the future? Well, we could start by beefing up our firewalls and implementing some robust AI-based detection algorithms. Excellent ideas. What else? We could also work with our internet service provider to block traffic from known bad actors and sources. Great call. Anything else come to mind? Hmm. We could encourage users to use strong passwords and two-factor authentication and try to stay up to date on the latest security trends. Smart moves all around. Thanks for sharing your insights, B. No problem, A. Always happy to chat about security with a fellow professional. Good morning, B. How can I help you today with your legal matter? Hi, A. I need some advice on a contract I signed with a vendor. Sure, let's take a look. What seems to be the issue? Well, they're not providing the services they promised, and I'm not sure what my options are. All right, let's review the contract and see what provisions we can use to enforce their obligations. Thanks, I just hope this doesn't turn into a legal battle. Don't worry, we'll do our best to resolve this amicably. Now, let me ask you something. Do you know why lawyers are always calm? Hmm, I'm not sure. Why is that? Because they charge by the hour. Laughs, that's a good one. Glad you liked it. Now, back to business. Have you tried negotiating with the vendor to resolve this issue? Yes, but they seem unwilling to cooperate. In that case, we may need to send a formal letter demanding performance or compensation. Sounds like a plan. I appreciate your help, A. No problem, B. That's what I'm here for. And remember, if you ever need legal help again, just give me a call. Thanks, we will do. Have a great day. You too, B. Take care. Good morning. I'm glad we could sit down together to discuss our company's insurance claims data. Well, we've gathered quite a bit of information on our clients' insurance claims, including the type of coverage, amount of claims, and the reasons for the claims. Exactly. There are probably certain correlations between the type of claim and the likelihood that it will be approved or denied. That's a great idea. We could even look at how long it takes for each claim to be processed and see if there's any room for improvement there. One thing's for sure, our data analysis will definitely help our company improve its insurance claims process and provide our clients with even better service. I couldn't agree more. It's great to have you as a partner in this effort. Hey, B. How's it going? Ready to talk automation? Hey, A. Sure thing, let's do it. I've been looking forward to this. Great. So, what's your experience with automating testing and deployments? Well, I've been working on automation for a while now, using tools like Selenium and Chef. How about you? I'm pretty versed with Jenkins and Docker, but I'm always looking to learn more. So, what do you suggest for our deployment pipeline? 
I suggest we start with defining our requirements and goals to figure out what needs automation. Then, we can integrate automated testing and deployments incrementally. Good point. We should also consider monitoring and logging to catch any failures. Absolutely. With enough logging, we can even speed up our debugging time. Have you tried automating the generation of custom logs? Not yet, but that definitely sounds useful. What tools do you recommend? I've been using Log4j and it's been pretty solid so far. Want to give it a try? Sure. By the way, have you tried implementing continuous integration and continuous deployment tools yet? Yep, I've had good success with Jenkins and Ansible. How about you? I've tried Circle CI and Travis CI as well. They were pretty easy to set up, and it's great to have those pipelines automated. Totally. Automation reduces human error and overall makes our lives easier. Speaking of, have you had any experience automating infrastructure as code? Yes, I've worked with Terraform and it's been amazing. Being able to define infrastructure in code makes our deployments more reproducible. Agreed. And it saves time by not having to provision environments manually. Exactly. So, when do you think we should start implementing automation in our project? I think we should start as soon as possible, with a focus on integration and deployment. That sounds like a solid plan. Let's get started. Hi B, how's it going? Hey A, it's going well. How about you? Can't complain. So, let's talk about our database system. Sure thing. I think we could make some improvements. I agree. What specifically do you think we should focus on? Well, I've noticed that our database queries are taking longer than they should. We could optimize those for speed. That's a good point. Are there any tools or technologies you recommend? Yes, I've been looking into some query optimization software. I think it could help us out a lot. Awesome, sounds good. Another thing I wanted to bring up is our data storage capacity. It seems like we're running out of room. I actually noticed that too. We might need to upgrade our servers for more storage. Yeah, that's definitely something we should consider. Do you have any estimates on how much that might cost? I haven't looked into that yet, but I can do some research and get back to you. Great, thanks. One other thing to think about is our security. Do you think we could improve that? Absolutely. I think we should implement stricter access controls and encrypt sensitive data. I totally agree. We can't be too careful when it comes to protecting the company's data. Definitely. And speaking of data, have you heard about a new database technology called NoSQL? I've been checking it out and it seems to have some benefits. No, I haven't heard of that. What makes it different from our current system? Well, it's designed for handling large, unstructured data sets, which could be useful for us. Plus, it's highly scalable and can handle a lot of traffic. Interesting. Maybe we should look into that further. It could be a game changer for us. Agreed. I'll do some more research on NoSQL and report back. Anything else on your mind? No, I think that covers everything. Thanks for discussing these issues with me, B. I feel like we're making some real progress on optimizing our database system. My pleasure, A. It's always good to bounce ideas off each other and find ways to improve our processes. Let's touch base again soon. Hey there, B. How's the progress of our project going? Hey, A. It's going pretty well so far. We're on track with the timeline we set. That's great to hear. Have you encountered any issues during development? Nothing major, just some minor bugs that we were able to fix quickly. Excellent. Let's take a look at the schedule for the upcoming weeks. How much time do you think you'll need to finish the next phase? I think I can finish it within a week. But I'll need some more people to test it out afterwards. All right. How about the design team? Are they keeping up with their part of the job? Yes, they are. I've received some great designs that specifically match the functionalities of the software. Wow, that's fantastic. Looks like we'll be able to have everything ready for our presentation in no time. Yes, I'm confident about it too. But hey, let's not get too confident and forget to double-check everything. That's a good point. We'll definitely make sure everything's perfect before we present it. Great. I'm really excited about how our project is turning out. It's going to make a real impact. Definitely. It's always amazing to see our hard work and effort come to fruition. Thanks for all your hard work, B. No problem, A. It's always great working with you. Hi, B. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about yourself? I'm doing well, too. Thanks. 
So, let's get down to business. I have a new performance opportunity for you. That's great. What kind of gig is it? It's an outdoor music festival that's happening next month. They're looking for artists to perform and I thought you'd be perfect for it. Wow, that sounds awesome. What kind of music are they looking for? They're open to all genres, but I think your style will fit in perfectly. It's going to be a pretty diverse crowd and I'm sure they'll appreciate your music. That sounds perfect. What kind of setup will we have? They'll have a stage and sound system already in place, but we'll need to bring your instruments and any other equipment you might need. Okay, do we have any other performances lined up around that time? We have a few other gigs, but nothing that conflicts with this festival. Would you be up for it? Absolutely. How long would our set be? They're looking for about 45 minutes, but we could do an hour if you feel up for it. Let's do it. This is going to be great exposure for us. Definitely. Plus, we'll get to enjoy some good music and food at the festival. Sounds like a win-win situation to me. Thanks for setting this up, eh? My pleasure, B. I'm always looking for new opportunities to showcase your talent. I appreciate it. So, let's get started on preparing for the festival. Absolutely. I'll start reaching out to the festival organizers and get everything finalized. We'll make sure you're ready to rock the stage. Have you ever tried bibimbap? No, I haven't. What is it? Bibimbap is a popular Korean dish that consists of rice, mixed vegetables, meat, and an egg on top. That sounds delicious. I love trying new foods. Yeah, it's really tasty. Do you like spicy food? I enjoy a little bit of spice, but not too much. Then you should try the bibimbap with medium spice. It's just the right amount of kick. Okay, I'll definitely try it next time. You can also customize it to your liking. You can add more meat, more vegetables, or even switch the rice for noodles. That's great. I like having options. And the best part is mixing everything together. It's like creating your own delicious culinary masterpiece. Haha, -ha, I can't wait to channel my inner artist and make the perfect bibimbap. Just remember to mix it well, or else you'll end up with a bite of all rice or all vegetables. Noted. Thanks for the tip. No problem. Bibimbap is one of my favorite dishes, and I love introducing people to it. I'm glad you did. I'm already looking forward to my next Bibimbap adventure. Haha, <laughs> welcome to the Bibimbap fan club. Wow, B, look at all the rides. What should we go on first? I want to go on the roller coaster, Dad. The roller coaster? Are you sure? It looks pretty scary. Yes, Dad. I'm not afraid of anything. All right, hold on tight then. Here we go. Whoa. That was amazing. Let's go again. Phew, I think I need a break after that one. Okay, let's go play some carnival games. I want to win a stuffed animal. All right, which one do you want to try first? Hmm, how about the ring toss? Sure thing. Let's see if we can get that giant teddy bear. Oh, so close. Maybe we'll have better luck with the balloon darts. Great idea. Just aim carefully and dash. Yes. We did it. Look, Dad, we won the bear. Fantastic work, B. Let's take a picture with our prize. Smile for the camera, Dad. Cheese. What a great day at the amusement park. Thanks for coming with me, B. Thanks for being the best dad ever, Dad. Hey, B, did you see how the pastor was leading the ceremony in church today? Yeah, it was really something. I admire how smoothly he transitions from one segment to another. I noticed that too. He speaks with such confidence and conviction. He definitely knows what he's doing. But sometimes, I wonder if he ever gets stage fright. Haha, <laughs> I doubt it. He's used to being in front of a crowd. It comes with the job. True. But I think it takes a lot of bravery to talk about such personal beliefs to a group of strangers. Agreed. And he does it so well. I always leave church feeling uplifted and inspired. Same here. I never thought I'd become a regular churchgoer, but the sense of community here has really made me feel at home. That's awesome to hear. I love how welcoming everyone is. It doesn't matter what your background is, you're always welcomed with open arms. It's true. And the best part is that we get to eat together afterwards who doesn't love potluck dinners? Huh. Nothing brings people together like a good potluck. I'm already looking forward to next week's. Me too. But let's not forget the real reason we're here. 
Today's sermon was so powerful. It really made me think about how I can be a better person. Yes, I definitely need to work on being more patient and kind with people. That's something the pastor talked about today that hit close to home. It's always good to be introspective and figure out ways to grow. That's the beauty of being in a community like this. Totally agree. I love that we can come together to practice our faith and support each other along the way. It's truly special. Good morning everyone, welcome to Tokyo's famous Sensoji Temple. My name is A, and I'll be your tour bus driver for today. And I'm B, your guide for this tour. Sensoji Temple is also known as Asakusa Temple, and it's one of the oldest temples in Tokyo. That's right, it was first built in the 7th century, and during World War II, it was bombed and destroyed, but it was rebuilt after the war. The temple is dedicated to Kenan, the goddess of mercy, and it's known for its iconic red lantern, which is one of the largest in Japan. The lantern is about 4 meters tall and weighs around 700 kilograms, it's quite a sight to see. Don't forget to take some photos in front of it. You should also try some of the traditional street food around the temple, like senbei rice crackers, yakitori skewers, and taiyaki fish-shaped cakes filled with sweetened red bean paste. And if you're feeling adventurous, there's even a traditional Japanese dress rental shop nearby where you can dress up in a kimono or yukata and take some memorable photos. Don't forget to explore the temple's pagoda, gardens, and main hall as well. You can even attend a traditional Shinto ceremony or buy some lucky charms as souvenirs. All right, everyone, we're here at the temple's entrance. Remember to follow the temple's etiquette, like bowing at the entrance, cleansing your hands before entering, and not pointing directly at the deities. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or any of the temple staff. Let's go experience the beauty and history of Sensoji Temple together. Hey B. Nice to see you again. How are things going? Hey A. I'm doing great, thanks. How about you? I'm good too, thanks. So, let's get down to business. How can we develop a cross-platform app for our travel company? Well, we need to start by identifying the key features that we want to include in our app. That's a good point. One feature that I think is important is the ability for users to create custom itineraries. Agreed. And we could also incorporate a feature that suggests popular attractions in the area based on user preferences. Definitely. We could also add a rating system so users can rate and review the attractions they visit. Great idea. And what about using GPS technology to track the user's location and provide personalized recommendations? Yes, that would be a fantastic addition to the app. And we could also include a feature that allows users to book tours and transportation directly through the app. Absolutely. Another feature we could add is a social media integration so users can share their travel experiences with their friends and family. Nice suggestion. And as far as the look and feel of the app, I think we should focus on clean and simple design with easy navigation. Yes, user experience is important. We don't want people to get lost in the app. How about including a feature that allows users to create their own travel journal? I love that idea. Users could add photos and comments about their travels and even share them with friends. Yes, that would make a great addition to the app. And what about incorporating machine learning to provide customized recommendations for each user? Wow, that's a great idea. This app could really set our travel company apart from the competition. Definitely. And it could also be a great revenue stream for the company. Agreed. I'm really excited to start working on this project with you, B. Me too, A. Let's create the best possible travel app for our customers. Good morning. How can I help you today? Hi there, doctor. I'm experiencing a bit of a headache lately. I see. Have you been under a lot of stress lately? Yes, actually. Work's been a bit hectic in the past few days. That may be the cause of your headache. Have you been getting enough sleep as well? I think so, but I do have problems falling asleep sometimes. I suggest you try to relax more and maybe practice some deep breathing exercises before bed. That should help you sleep better. Thanks, doctor. Is there anything else I should do? I'll prescribe some painkillers for the headache, but please avoid taking them too often. Try to address the root cause of the headache instead. Sure thing, doc. Thanks for your advice. You're welcome. Anything else you'd like to ask me? Not at the moment, doc. Thanks again for your help. No problem. Feel free to come back anytime. Take care. Will do. Have a good day. Hi there. I have a bit of an issue. I think my luggage may have gotten lost on my flight. Oh no, sorry to hear that. 
Let's see if we can help you find it. Can I please have your name and flight number? Sure. My name is John Smith, and my flight number was DL-236. Thank you, John. Can you describe your luggage for me? It was a bright green suitcase with a few stickers on it. And I had a black backpack with me too. Okay, got it. Let me check the system to see if anything has been reported. Do you have your baggage ticket? Yes, here it is. Hands over baggage ticket. All right, thank you. It looks like your luggage hasn't arrived with the flight. We will do our best to locate it and have it delivered to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. No problem. It's our job to assist you. In the meantime, can I offer you any refreshments? That would be great. Thank you. Here's a coffee and a croissant for you. Enjoy. Thanks. This is definitely making me feel better. Happy to help. And if you have any other concerns, feel free to let us know. Will do. Thank you again. Have a safe trip. Hey, have you visited any museums lately? Yes, I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art last weekend. It was amazing. Cool. Speaking of museums, I am currently working on a cultural event website. I would love to have your insights on how to improve the user experience. Sure, I would be happy to help. What are some of the current issues with the user experience? Well, we have received feedback that the navigation menu is confusing and the color scheme is not visually appealing. The navigation menu should be straightforward and easy to use. As for the color scheme, we could incorporate some of the artwork from the museums to create a more vibrant and engaging experience. That's a great idea. I'll also look into adding some interactive features like virtual tours and artist talks. Yes, those would definitely enhance the user experience. Have you considered incorporating user-generated content like reviews and photos from previous events? That's an excellent suggestion. User-generated content adds a personal touch and encourages engagement. Exactly. And we can use those reviews and photos to showcase the events and attract more attendees. I love it. Thanks for your help. I think these changes will definitely improve the website's user experience. No problem at all. Happy to help. Let me know if you need any more input or design assistance. Hey there B, how's your day been so far? It's been pretty good, just busy with all these orders. Yeah, we've been really busy lately, which is a good thing. Absolutely, especially with the heat wave we're experiencing. Tell me about it. How about we mix things up and try making a new drink today? Sounds like a plan. What do you have in mind? I was thinking of combining some mango and pineapple to make a tasty smoothie. That sounds delicious. Let's give it a try. All right, let me get the ingredients and blender. While you do that, I'll take care of the cash register and customer orders. You got it, B. Let's work together to make this place the best it can be. Agreed. We're a great team. Laughs, I couldn't have said it better myself. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we create a loyalty program to thank our regular customers? Great idea, B. And what could be better than rewarding them with free drinks? Yes, we can offer a free drink after five purchases. I like the sound of that. We'll start working on it and let our customers know soon. Absolutely. Our customers are our top priority. That's right, and we'll always strive to make them feel special when they come to our store. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's serve some delicious drinks and make people happy. Hey there, ready to hit those waves? Absolutely. I've been waiting for this moment. Glad to have you on board. I'm A, your surfing instructor. Anyone else joining us? No, it's just me. I'm a travel photographer looking to capture some awesome shots. That's perfect. We'll make sure you get some great ones. Let's start with the basics, though. Have you ever surfed before? I've tried a few times, but I definitely need some improvement. No worries. We'll start with some balance exercises on the shore. Then we'll move to the waves. Awesome. I'm excited to learn. How many people usually take your lessons? It varies, but we usually have about three to five people per lesson. Today's a quiet day, but the waves are looking great. Fantastic. I can't wait to catch some action shots. Let's start by getting you into a wetsuit and grabbing the board. Sounds good. So, what's the most important thing to remember when surfing? It's all about balance and timing. You want to catch the wave as it's just starting to break. That makes sense. You make it look so easy, though. Haha, <laughs> it takes practice. Now let's get out there and show those waves who's boss. Let's do this. Hey, B. Thanks for coming by. 
we really need your expertise in building a high-quality financial data platform. No problem, hey. I'm always up for a challenge. What's the goal here? Basically, we need a secure and efficient data platform that can handle a large volume of transactions and customer data. Can you help us with that? Sure, I can definitely put something together. What kind of security protocols do we need to have in place? We need to ensure that data is encrypted and that there are strict access controls. We can't afford any data breaches. Got it. We'll need a secure user authentication system and a strong encryption algorithm. Have you thought about what kind of database technology to use? We were thinking about using a NoSQL database technology because of its scalability and flexibility. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, that makes sense. We can use something like Cassandra or MongoDB for that. Great, let's go with that. How about data backup and disaster recovery? We'll need to implement regular backups and make sure that we have a solid disaster recovery plan in place. We'll also need to test the effectiveness of the plan regularly. That's really important. Thanks for bringing that up. How long do you think it will take to put all these pieces together? It depends on the specifics, but I'd estimate between three and six months. We'll also need to allocate resources for testing and quality assurance. Sounds good. What about data visualization and analytics? We want to be able to easily mine the data for insights. We can use something like Tableau or Power BI for that. It's also important that we use a unified data format, so we'll need to work on creating a metadata registry. Got it. Thanks for all your hard work on this, B. It sounds like we have a solid plan in place. No problem, A. This is what I do best. I'm looking forward to getting started. Hey B, how was your workout with the fitness coach today? Oh man, A, it was intense. But I feel great now. That's awesome. I saw you doing some cardio, how did that go? It was tough, but the coach kept pushing me to keep going. That's great, he's a really good coach. How about the weights? Did you lift any heavy ones? Yeah, I did some weight training with the coach. He was really helpful with my form. That's great to hear. I remember when I first started working out here, the coach helped me so much with my form too. Yeah, he's definitely one of the best coaches I've ever had. Did he give you any tips for your diet? Yeah, he did. He suggested that I should eat more protein and cut back on the junk food. That's a great advice. I should definitely listen to him too. Absolutely. It's amazing how much a good diet can impact your fitness goals. Totally agree. Hey, why don't we grab a smoothie at the gym's cafe? It's a great way to refuel after a workout. Yeah, that's an awesome idea, eh? Hey, a post-workout smoothie sounds amazing right now. Let's go. I heard they just added some new flavors too. Sweet, let's see what they've got. Thanks for the suggestion, eh? Hey, you're the best gym buddy ever. Hey, B. Nice to see you here. So, what's the latest project you're working on? Hey, eh? Hey, same to you. I'm currently handling the back-end services for a travel agency website. That's pretty cool. I'm working on the front-end development of a social media app. Nice. We should collaborate on something. Absolutely. In fact, I was hoping to get your expertise on building a fast and reliable front-end for my app. Sure, I'd be happy to help. What are some of the challenges you've been facing? Well, I'm worried about performance and load times. And of course, making sure that user data is secure. Definitely important considerations. For performance, we can implement caching and minimize the use of heavy libraries. And for security, we can use SSL slash TLS protocols and implement measures like CSRF protection. Those are great suggestions. One thing that worries me is cross-browser compatibility. What do you think is the best approach for that? We can use a combination of feature detection and progressive enhancement techniques to ensure that the site works across multiple browsers. Sounds like a solid approach. How do you think we should handle image assets? We can start by optimizing image file sizes and using appropriate file formats. And we can also lazy load images to improve page load times. Good idea. And how about responsiveness? We can use media queries and fluid layouts to make the site responsive across different screen sizes. Excellent. You've really given me a lot to work with. Thanks for your insights, B. No problem, A. It's always great working alongside someone with your talents. Hi there, B. I see we're both working on improving our self-driving system with machine learning. Yes, that's right. I've been researching different algorithms that could enhance our system's accuracy. 
Sounds interesting. What kind of algorithms have you looked into? Well, I've been exploring convolutional neural networks and decision trees. They both seem promising. Ah, uh, I see. I've mostly been working with regression algorithms. They can help us predict the movement of other cars on the road. That's a good idea. We could combine our efforts and see how these algorithms work together. Definitely. We could also create more data sets to train our models so they can better handle different driving scenarios. Yes, that's crucial. And we could use reinforcement learning to help the system learn from its mistakes and make better decisions. Brilliant. That approach should also help us avoid any unsafe driving situations. Absolutely. We want our system to be as safe and reliable as possible. Speaking of which, have you heard about any recent self-driving car incidents? Oh yes, unfortunately there have been a few. It's a reminder that we need to be extra diligent with our system's development. That's for sure. But with our combined expertise in software and machine learning, I have no doubt we'll make a huge impact in the industry. Agreed. Let's keep pushing the boundaries and see how far we can take this technology. Sounds like a plan. Let's get to work. Hey B, have you thought about how we could handle user data to improve our advertising campaigns? Sure thing, hey. As a database manager, I'm always thinking about data management. Do you have any ideas? Well, as a software engineer, I've been thinking of creating an algorithm that can study user behavior and interests to tailor our ads accordingly. That sounds like a great idea. It will make our ads more personalized and improve user engagement. Yes, and we can also track the effectiveness of the ads using the data we collect. Absolutely. The more data we acquire, the better we can cater to our customers' interests and make our ads more appealing. Plus, we can use that data to create better user experiences on our website and app. That's right. Happy users mean more engagement and revenue for our company. I'm glad we're on the same page, B. It's always great working with someone who understands the importance of effective data management. Agreed, A. It's essential to making the most out of our customers' data and providing them with the best experience possible. Hi there. Are you my new assistant for tonight's barbecue? Yes, Chef. I am excited to be working with you. Great. Let's go over the menu. We have grilled prawns, squid skewers, and barbecue ribs. Sounds delicious. What sides do we have? We have roasted corn, garlic bread, and a mixed salad. Yum. I'm definitely eyeing the roasted corn. It's a customer favorite. We'll need to keep an eye on the grill, especially since it's a busy night. Noted. Do you have any tips for grilling seafood? I'm more used to serving drinks. Make sure the grill is hot and brush the prawns and squid with oil to prevent sticking. And don't overcook them, seafood cooks quickly. Thanks, chef. Got it. By the way, do you prefer Coke or iced tea for drinks? Definitely iced tea, the perfect thirst quencher for a hot day on the beach. I agree. And for dessert, do we have anything new? Yes, our pastry chef just made a fresh batch of blueberry cheesecake. It's a must-try. Oh, I'm drooling just thinking about it. I'll make sure to recommend it to our customers. Perfect. With our teamwork, we can make this a successful and delicious night. Let's get to work. Hey B, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. Just trying to figure out the best way to design and deploy our health insurance system on the cloud. That's where I come in. As a cloud engineer, I can help you create a secure and scalable solution. Awesome, I'm glad I have you on my team. So, where do we start? Well, first we need to determine the specific needs and requirements of the system. What kind of data will we be handling? We'll be dealing with personal health information, so security is obviously a top concern. Absolutely. We'll need to make sure that all data is encrypted in transit and at rest. Plus, we can use access control policies to restrict who has access to the data. Good point. And what about backups? How do we ensure our data is always available, even in case of a disaster? We can set up automated backups to multiple regions, so that in the event of an outage, we can quickly spin up a new instance in a different region. Nice. And what about load balancing? We expect high traffic volumes, especially during open enrollment. How can we ensure fast and reliable performance? We can set up a load balancer with automatic scaling, which will help optimize performance and ensure that the system can handle any spikes in traffic. Impressive. What about monitoring and logging? We need to be able to quickly identify and troubleshoot any issues that come up. 
we can use tools like CloudWatch and Elasticsearch to monitor system performance, track errors, and get real-time alerts when something goes wrong. You really seem to know your stuff. I'm feeling a lot better about this project already. Glad to help. One last thing we should consider is disaster recovery. We need to have a plan in place to quickly recover from any outages or data loss. Of course. We'll need to do regular test restores from backups to make sure our plan will work when we need it. Absolutely. With the right planning and design, we can make sure that our system is secure, scalable, and always available. Hey there, how's it going? I'm doing great, thank you. How about you? I'm fine. I'm just a little worried about my animal's health. Can you give me some advice on how to take better care of them? Sure, I'd be happy to help. What kind of animals do you have? I have a few cows, some chickens, and a couple of pigs. Ah, uh, I see. Well, the most important thing is to keep them clean and dry. Make sure their bedding is changed regularly and their pen is well ventilated. That makes sense. What should I feed them? A balanced diet is key. Make sure they're getting enough protein, fiber, and vitamins. You can also give them treats like apples or carrots to keep them happy. Sounds good. What about vaccinations? It's important to keep them up to date on their vaccinations. This will keep them healthy and prevent the spread of diseases. Okay, I'll make sure to do that. Do you have any other suggestions? Yes, regular checkups with a vet are important. They can catch any health issues early on and prevent them from turning into bigger problems. Great advice. Thank you so much for your help. No problem, happy to assist. Good luck with your animals. Good evening, welcome to our restaurant. Have you decided on what to order for dinner tonight? Hi there, yes we have. Can we get two orders of the chef's special tonight? Of course, our chef's special tonight is the seafood risotto. Excellent choice. That sounds delicious. Can we also have a bottle of your best red wine, please? Absolutely, which brand would you prefer? We're not too picky, so surprise us. All right, I'll make sure to bring you something special. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, could you recommend a dessert for us? The tiramisu is a customer favorite, but our chef also just made a fresh batch of chocolate lava cake. Wow, they both sound amazing. We'll take one of each, please. Perfect, your order will be up shortly. In the meantime, please enjoy some fresh bread and olive oil on the house. Thank you so much. The service here is excellent. You're very welcome. We always aim to provide the best service to our customers. So, do you work with the chef often? Yes, I work with the chef closely to ensure our customers receive the best dining experience possible. That's great to hear. I'm sure we'll be coming back again soon. We'd love to have you back. Your dinner is ready. I'll bring it out to you shortly. Enjoy your meal. Good morning, boss. How are you today? Hey, hey. I'm doing great, thanks. How about you? I'm fantastic, boss. The aroma of the kitchen and the sizzle of the wok always gets me going. That's what I like to hear. So, what's on the menu for today? Today, we have some amazing Cantonese classics like steamed fish, roast pork, and stir-fried noodles. Sounds absolutely delicious. I'll have to make sure to try them all. You definitely should, boss. But, I have to warn you, the roast pork is my personal favorite and it tends to disappear quickly. All right, noted. So, are we fully prepped for today's rush? Yes, boss. We have all the ingredients prepped, the sauces are made, and the kitchen is clean and tidy. Great job, eh? I always appreciate your attention to detail. Thank you, boss. I take pride in my work and I'm glad it shows. So, tell me, what's the craziest thing that has ever happened in the kitchen? Well, once a colleague accidentally dropped a tray of eggs on the floor and they all cracked open. It was a slippery mess. Laughs, oh no. That sounds like a real explosion. Laughs, yes, boss. And we scrambled to clean up the mess before anyone slipped and got hurt. Well, I'm glad it all worked out in the end. Thanks for the laugh, eh? No problem, boss. Anything to keep the mood light and fun. Okay, back to business. Let's make sure we're ready for the lunch crowd. On it, boss. Let's get cooking. Hi B, it's great to be working with you on this project to improve our payment system. What are your thoughts on how we can incorporate blockchain technology? Hey, good to be working with you too. Blockchain can definitely help eliminate fraudulent transactions and increase transparency for our customers. 
Yeah, I was also thinking we could use smart contracts to automate the payment process and make it more efficient. Absolutely. And since blockchain is decentralized, we don't have to rely on a single central authority to process transactions. That's a great point. It's also much more secure than traditional payment methods. I completely agree. With blockchain, all transactions are stored in an immutable ledger, so there's no chance of manipulation. Plus, blockchain is adaptable to various payment channels, including mobile payments and e-wallets. Exactly. It's a perfect fit for the fast-paced and evolving world of financial technology. By the way, have you seen the latest blockchain-based payment apps? They're so user-friendly and convenient. Yes, I have. They make payments seamless and hassle-free. That's exactly the kind of user experience we should be aiming for. Agreed. Our payment system needs to be fast, secure, and easy to use. I'm confident that with blockchain, we'll be able to achieve all of those goals. I couldn't agree more. It's exciting to be working on such cutting-edge technology, and I'm looking forward to seeing the end result. Same here. Let's get to work and make this payment system the best it can be. Hi there, B. I have been working on the data analysis for our telecom company, and I realized that the customer churn rate has increased in recent months. Hey, hey, that's not good news. We need to address this issue before our customers decide to switch to our competitors. Exactly. I have been thinking about using machine learning to predict customer behavior and prevent churn. What do you think about this approach? It sounds like a great idea. We can gather data from different sources and train the model to classify customers who are more likely to leave. That's true. However, we need to ensure that our data is clean and complete, or else our prediction results could be biased or inaccurate. Agreed. We should also consider other factors such as customer satisfaction, billing issues, and service quality to build a more reliable model. Right. We can use different algorithms to compare and evaluate the results. By analyzing the accuracy, we can choose the best approach to prevent churn. Sounds like a plan. We can also create a dashboard to visualize the results and make it easy for managers to monitor the churn rate and take immediate actions. That's a great idea, B. With this approach, we can not only identify customers who are about to churn, but also develop tailored retention strategies to keep our loyal customers happy. Exactly, A. We have a lot of data available, and by using it intelligently, we can create value for our customers and our business. I'm looking forward to working with you on this project, B. Let's keep in touch and keep making progress. Same here, A. Let's make sure to schedule regular meetings and update each other on our progress. Good morning, Dr. B. Are you ready for the surgery today? Yes, Nurse A. I am all set for the surgery. How about you? Are you prepared? Absolutely, doctor. I have double-checked all the surgical instruments and made sure they are sterilized. That's great to hear. We need to ensure the patient's safety and avoid any possible infection. Speaking of safety, have you tried the new surgical gloves? They are said to provide better grip and sensitivity. No, I haven't. But with your recommendation, I will definitely give it a try in the next surgery. Also, I heard a joke this morning. Want to hear it? Why not? A good laugh is always welcome. Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Ah, that's hilarious. Thanks for the laughter, Nurse A. Anytime, Doctor. We need to keep our spirits high during the long hours of surgery. You are absolutely right. It's teamwork and positive attitude that make the surgery successful. Speaking of teamwork, should we call in the anesthetist and start the procedure? Yes, let's do that. Time is crucial during surgery. Right, I will call her in now. And, doctor, remember to breathe during the surgery. Ah, I will try my best, Nurse A. You always know how to alleviate the tension. Let's begin the surgery. Hi there. I'm A, a search and rescue officer. What brings you to this vessel, B? Hey, A. It's nice to meet you. I'm a marine scientist conducting research on ocean currents. I figured I could gain some valuable research data on this ship. That's really interesting. Say, have you ever had to deal with any sea disasters during your research? Fortunately, no. Safety is always a top priority. But I know it can be challenging for search and rescue teams to locate a distressed vessel out on the open sea. Definitely. The vastness of the ocean and unpredictable weather conditions can be daunting. Sometimes it feels like we're searching for a needle in a haystack. I can imagine. But I'm sure you have some impressive technology at your disposal, right? 
We sure do. Our equipment includes thermal imaging cameras, sonar systems, and GPS tracking devices. Wow, that sounds advanced. But I'm sure it still takes a lot of skill to locate a ship in distress. Do you have any tips for dealing with the mental strain of such high-stakes rescues? Yes, staying calm and focused is key. It's easy to let emotions take over, but we have to remember that our job is to help those in need. It's also important to work collaboratively with other teams. I totally agree. Teamwork is vital in all aspects of life, whether you're conducting scientific research or saving lives. Thanks for chatting with me, A. E. Stay safe out there. No problem, B. And you too. Keep up the great work with your research. Hello, welcome to today's yoga class. My name is A, and I'll be your instructor. Can you tell me your name, please? Sure, my name is B. I'm excited to be here and learn some yoga poses. Great to have you here, B. We'll start with some warm-up exercises to get your muscles ready for some stretching. Sounds good. By the way, I'm a beginner, so I might need some extra guidance. No worries, B. I'll be happy to assist you. Let's begin with some simple exercises, like neck and shoulder rolls. Hmm, that feels nice. I didn't know I was carrying so much tension in my neck. Yoga helps release physical and mental tension. That's why we practice breathing techniques and meditation too. Oh, I see. Is it okay if I take a break if I need to? Of course, listen to your body and take breaks as needed. Now, reach up with your arms and stretch towards the sky. Ah, uh, that feels invigorating. I'm starting to feel more relaxed already. Great, now we'll move to some standing poses. Let's begin with a tree pose. Place your right foot on your left thigh and hold your hands together over your head. Whoa, this is challenging. I'm wobbling a bit. It's okay, keep your focus and find a point to stare at to maintain balance. Now, switch to the other leg. Okay, I think my left leg is more stable. I feel like I'm getting better already. You're doing great, B. Remember, practice makes progress. Let's do some closing poses and shavasana to relax completely. That sounds like a good way to end the class. Thank you, A, for guiding me through this session. It was my pleasure. B, don't forget to practice at home too, and let me know how it goes. See you in the next class. Hey there. How are you doing today, B? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. So, let's get down to business. What do you think we can do to optimize the drug research database for our pharma company? Well, my first suggestion would be to streamline the data entry process. We can develop a better user interface to make it easy for researchers to input data correctly. That sounds like a good idea. I agree that we need to make the process simpler for researchers. What else do you have in mind? We can also create a dashboard that will give an overview of various parameters like dosage, efficacy, and safety of different drugs. Great. Can we track which researchers are using the database most frequently? Yes, we can collect data on who uses the database and for how long. This will help us further improve the database to meet their research needs. What about cloud storage? Can we integrate that into our database for safe and easy storage and retrieval of data? Absolutely. Cloud storage is an excellent solution for security and ease of data access. I see. Can we also incorporate machine learning for data analysis? Yes, with machine learning, we can identify patterns that are difficult for humans to detect. It will help us improve our research outcomes. Sounds interesting. And what about data backup and recovery? Can we implement a robust backup and recovery system? Yes, it's crucial to have proper backup and recovery procedures in place to prevent data loss. We can implement a data protection plan to ensure the safety and security of the research data. That's great. Do you think we need any additional training for researchers to use the enhanced database? Yes, it's always a good idea to train researchers on any new technology or software. We should set up a training program to educate researchers on how to use the new features of the updated database. That's a fantastic idea. What about any potential costs associated with implementing these changes? We should do a cost-benefit analysis to determine the feasibility of implementing these changes. But ultimately, the improvements we make to our research database will help us save time and money down the line. This has been an excellent discussion, B. Let's take a few days to gather information and have another meeting to go over our findings. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, A. Hey, have you ever tried Langos before? Hmm, I don't think I have. What is it? It's a Hungarian specialty made with deep-fried dough, 
topped with garlic, sour cream, and grated cheese. Oh wow, that sounds tasty. Where can we find some? Well, there's a Hungarian food truck parked down the street. Want to grab some for lunch? Absolutely, let's give it a shot. Great, we'll have to make sure to get extra cheese. Definitely. Do you think it's a finger food or should we have utensils ready? It's definitely a finger food. Good thing they give you napkins. Laughs, I love foods that encourage using your hands. Me too. It makes it feel like more of an experience. Do you know what drink would go well with Langos? A cold beer would be perfect. I couldn't agree more. Let's eat and drink like true Hungarians. Cheers to that. Hi coach, how's it going? Not too bad. Ready for today's training? Absolutely. I'm feeling good and ready to give it my all. That's what I like to hear. Let's start with some warm-ups to get those muscles moving. Sounds good to me. I need to make sure I stretch out before I enter myself. Very wise. So, have you been practicing any of the drills we worked on last time? Yeah, I've been trying to perfect my passing technique. Excellent. Let's focus on that today then. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. Speaking of perfect, did you happen to catch the game last night? Which game? There were so many on. The one where the underdogs won. It was a real nail-biter. Oh right, I did hear about that. I didn't get to watch it unfortunately, I had to mark some papers. Ah, uh, the life of a coach. Always working hard. Ah, uh, that's what they pay me for. But enough about me, let's get back to work. Yes coach, I'm ready when you are. All right, let's get started. Pass the ball here and let's see what you're made of. You got it, coach. Passes the ball. Good evening, sir. May I see your ticket? Yes, of course. Hands over the ticket. Great. Are you excited for the concert? Yes, I am. I've been waiting for weeks. That's wonderful to hear. Could you please place all of your items in the tray so we can scan them? Sure thing. Places items in tray and walks through the metal detector. Thank you, sir. Enjoy the show. Laughs, I will. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, do you know who the opening act is? Yes, it's a local band called the Rattlesnakes. They're pretty good. Oh cool, I'll have to check them out. Definitely do. And just a reminder, please refrain from using any flash photography during the concert. No problem, thanks for the heads up. My pleasure. Have a great time. Thanks, you too. Welcome to our bar. I'm A, the pastry chef here. What can I do for you today? Hi A, I'm B, the cocktail specialist. I'm here to collaborate with you on some special treats. Great. What kind of flavors are you thinking of pairing with your cocktails? I was thinking some citrusy and fruity notes would go great with our summer drinks. That sounds wonderful. I have some strawberry shortcake bites and lemon tarts that might be perfect for that. Oh wow, those look amazing. Let me make you a mojito and a froze to pair them with. Yum, I can't wait to try those. While we're at it, do you have any suggestions for a dessert that would complement your classic old-fashioned? How about a bourbon-infused chocolate cake with a hint of orange? It would bring out the richness of the whiskey. Brilliant. I'll start working on that right away. By the way, have you ever tried using rosemary or basil in your cocktails? Actually, I have. A sprig of rosemary in a gin and tonic or a basil-infused margarita can add a nice herbal twist. I'll keep that in mind for future collaborations. Speaking of which, we should come up with some recipes for the holiday season. Absolutely, maybe a spiced cranberry cocktail or a gingerbread-flavored dessert. Yes, and we could even do a tasting event where customers vote for their favorite pairings. That's a fantastic idea. I can't wait to see what we can create together. Me too. Let's keep experimenting and making our patrons happy with our delicious and innovative treats. Cheers to that. Good morning, B. How are you feeling today? Good morning, A. I'm feeling better today, thank you. That's great to hear. Have you been getting plenty of rest? Yes, I have. But, to be honest, being in the hospital is a bit boring. I understand. Have you watched any good movies or read any interesting books? Actually, I've been binge-watching some shows on Netflix. Do you have any recommendations? Hmm, have you watched Stranger Things or Narcos? Yes, I love Stranger Things. Maybe I'll check out Narcos next. Narcos is really good. 
You should watch it with the English subtitles on to improve your language skills. That's a great idea. I've been practicing some English phrases with the staff, too. Excellent. Speaking of practicing, have you been doing your breathing exercises? Yes, I have. They've been helping a lot. Thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. Keep it up. Have you had any visitors recently? Yeah, my family came to visit yesterday. We played some board games and it was nice to spend time with them. That sounds fun. What's your favorite board game? I love playing Monopoly, but my family always cheats. Haha, <laughs> I know that feeling. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better and staying entertained. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you, A. You've been such a helpful assistant. Hi there. Hello. Welcome to our duty-free store. How can I assist you today? I'm just looking around. Maybe you could recommend something? Of course. Are you shopping for special occasions or just for fun? Oh, just browsing for something fun. Well, have you checked out our perfume section? We have some great scents on sale. Perfumes are not really my thing. Do you have any other suggestions? How about some premium chocolates? We have a variety of flavors and they make great souvenirs. That sounds perfect. Which one do you recommend? Our best-selling Belgian chocolate box is a popular choice among our customers. That sounds great. I'll take a box. Sure. Let me wrap it up for you. Here you go. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's it for now. Thanks for helping me find the perfect gift. It's my pleasure. Have a safe flight and enjoy your chocolates. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 security architecture before? Yeah, I've heard a little bit about it. It's something to do with setting up secure systems, right? That's right. It's a global standard that helps organizations set up and run secure information management systems. Interesting. So, what are some of the key components of an effective security architecture? Well, there are a few things that are really important, like access controls, encryption, and vulnerability management. Ah, uh, I see. So, how do you make sure that all of those components work well together? That's a great question. It's all about approaching security in a systematic way and making sure that everything is integrated and working together smoothly. Gotcha. I imagine education and training play a big role in making sure everyone is on the same page. Absolutely. It's so important to make sure that everyone in the organization understands the importance of security and knows how to use the tools they need to protect sensitive data. So, what are some things individuals can do to help maintain security in their own work? Well, some simple things like using strong passwords, not sharing login information, and reporting any suspicious activity can really help keep things secure. That makes sense. It's always better to be safe than sorry when it comes to security. Exactly. And it's important to keep up with the latest security updates and best practices to stay ahead of any potential threats. Yes, staying informed is definitely key. Thanks for breaking it down for me, A. Hey. I feel like I have a better understanding of ISO 27001 security architecture now. Of course, happy to help. If you have any other questions or want to dive deeper, let's connect again. Hi there. I'm a front-end engineer. Nice to meet you. Hey, great to meet you too. I'm a mobile app developer. So, what brings you here? I'm here to discuss the design of a music player app. Our company wants to create an app that is easy to use and accessible for everyone. That's awesome. I'm excited to work on this. What kind of features are we looking at implementing? Well, we want the app to have a sleek and modern design with easy navigation and a user-friendly interface. It should also have features like shuffle, repeat, and playlist creation. I totally agree. We should also make sure it's compatible with different platforms and devices like smartphones and tablets. Exactly. And we should make it easy to search for songs and artists and allow for personalized recommendations based on user preferences. Yes, and we should also integrate social media features like sharing songs and following artists to make it more interactive and fun for users. That's a great idea. We want users to have a seamless experience while using the app, so we need to make sure everything is perfectly optimized. I completely agree. We'll have to work closely together to make sure we cover all the bases and create an amazing product that users will love. Yes, teamwork is key. I'm glad we're on the same page. Me too. I'm excited to get started on this project. Hey B, have you ever migrated an application to a cloud platform before? Yeah, I have. In fact, I've done it a few times already. 
It's not too difficult once you get the hang of it. Awesome. That's good to hear. What are some challenges that we might face with this migration? Well, there are a few things to consider. Security, scalability, and reliability. But don't worry, we can handle it. Okay, cool. So, what are the benefits of migrating our app to the cloud platform? There are a lot of benefits, such as better performance, more cost efficiency, and easier scalability. Plus, it's a lot easier to access from anywhere. Oh, that's really cool. How long do you think this whole process will take? It depends on the size and complexity of the application, but usually it takes a few weeks to a few months. Okay, that's longer than I anticipated. But I'm sure it will be worth it in the end. Definitely. By the way, have you thought about which cloud platform we should use? Not really. There are so many options out there. Which one do you suggest? Well, it really depends on your needs. I would suggest Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services, but we can also consider Microsoft Azure or IBM Cloud. Hmm, I'll have to do some research on those. Thanks for the suggestions. No problem. Let me know if you need any help with the migration process. Will do. Oh, speaking of which, do we need any extra resources for this project? It's always good to have some extra help. I suggest we bring on one or two more engineers to assist with the migration. That's a good call. I'll contact HR to start the hiring process. Sounds like a plan. Let's make sure we get this migration done right. Agreed. Thanks for your help, B. Anytime, A. Hey, B. How are you doing today? Hi, A. I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm good too, thanks. I was hoping we could have a chat about user privacy on our social network. Absolutely. It's a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Great. So, what do you think about the recent data breaches that have been happening? It's really concerning. Users need to be able to trust us to safeguard their information. We need to take this very seriously. I completely agree. We need to make sure our security protocols are top-notch. Yes, and we also need to educate our users about the importance of strong passwords and not sharing personal information. That's true. We should encourage them to enable two-factor authentication too. Definitely. And when it comes to collecting data, we need to be transparent and get their consent. Right. We also need to limit access to sensitive data and use encryption whenever possible. Exactly. It's a constant process of reviewing and improving our security measures. Agreed. It's our responsibility to protect our users' privacy and data. Yes, and it's also good business sense. Users are more likely to stick around if they trust us. That's a great point. Thanks for the discussion, B. Let's work together to make sure our users are safe and secure. My pleasure, A. Together, we can achieve anything. Hey, have you checked out the new website design? Yeah, it looks great. But I have some thoughts about the font and layout. Really? I thought it was perfect. Well, in my opinion, the font could be a little bigger. It would make it easier to read. I see what you mean. And what about the layout? I think we could have more white space. It would make it less cluttered. Hmm, that's a good point. But don't you think it might look a little boring? Not necessarily. With the right balance of color and spacing, it could actually enhance the design. I like that idea. What about the typeface? Do you think we should use a different one? Personally, I think we should stick with this font. It's simple, clean, and easy to read. Agreed. What about the colors? Do you think we could add more? Well, I don't think we need to add more colors, but we could use some contrasting shades to make certain elements stand out. I like that. What about the header? Do you think we should make it larger? No, I think it's a good size already. If we make it too big, it will overwhelm the rest of the page. Good point. So, do you have any other suggestions? Actually, I think we could add some images to break up the text and make it more visually appealing. That's a great idea. We could use some photos or graphics that tie into the theme of the website. Exactly. I think it would really make the design pop. I agree. I'll get to work on implementing these changes. Thanks for your feedback. Anytime. Let me know if you need any more suggestions. Good afternoon. How can I help you today? Hi, I'm here to refill my prescription for diabetes medication. Sure thing. Before we get started, can you tell me a bit about how you've been managing your diabetes recently? Honestly, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. 
I've been trying to eat better and exercise more, but I still have trouble keeping my blood sugar levels consistent. I see. Well, medication is just one part of managing diabetes, so it's great that you're already taking steps to improve your diet and physical activity. Let's take a look at your prescription. Great. I'm hoping to switch to something that's more convenient to take, if possible. Absolutely. There are several options available. Have you considered an injectable medication? It only needs to be taken once a week. Oh, I'm not sure I'm ready for injections. No problem, we also have tablet medications that are easy to take and effective in managing blood sugar levels. That sounds much more manageable. And are there any side effects I should be aware of? Like all medications, there are potential side effects, but we'll go over the details together and make sure you have all the information you need. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Of course, and if you ever have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help you manage your diabetes and stay healthy. Hi there, it's great to finally meet you. I'm excited to discuss how we can use our respective expertise to discover new drugs using AI technology. Hello. Likewise, I think we can create some really innovative solutions. What specific challenges have you come across in your data science work so far? Well, one major challenge is sorting through large amounts of data to find patterns and potential targets for drug development. There's just so much data to comb through. Totally understand. I think AI can definitely help by automating some of the tedious tasks, like data organization and analysis. That's exactly what I was hoping to achieve. But how do we ensure the AI doesn't miss anything important? Ah, uh, yes. We need to create a robust algorithm that takes into account all relevant variables and weights them appropriately. A task for both of us. Definitely. And what about the ethical implications of using AI to develop drugs? Good point. We'll have to ensure that we're not cutting corners on safety testing and that we're transparent about our methods. Agreed. It's important to keep the end goal in mind, improving health outcomes for patients. Absolutely. With our combined expertise and a focus on ethical practices, I'm confident we can find some promising new drugs. Let's get to work. Hi there, I'm Chef A. Nice to meet you. Hi Chef A. I'm Photographer B. Likewise. So, are you excited to learn how to make Japanese wagashi? Absolutely. I've always been interested in the art of Japanese confectionery. Great. Let's get started then. We will be making delicious and beautiful shaped sweets using azuki and matcha. Sounds amazing. What's the first step? We have to clean our workspace and prepare the necessary ingredients like azuki beans, sugar, and glutinous rice flour. Awesome. I'll take some photos of the process. Do you have any tips for taking good food photography? Well, make sure to take lots of close-up shots to highlight the texture and color of the wagashi. Natural lighting is also important. Thank you for the advice. What's the next step in the cooking process? We need to boil the azuki beans and add sugar to make a sweet red bean paste. Then we'll use that paste to fill the wagashi dough. Wow, this is harder than I thought. It's definitely an art. Absolutely. We are preserving a traditional art form that has been practiced for centuries. I couldn't agree more. And it's not just about the taste, it's also about the visual appeal. Yes, we always strive to make sure our wagashi are not only delicious, but also beautiful. I'm impressed. You truly are an artist in the kitchen. Thank you, Photographer B. You're also an artist behind the camera. Well, we make a great team then. Agreed. And now, let's finish our wagashi and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Sounds like a plan. Thank you for a wonderful experience, Chef A. It was my pleasure. Let's go take some photos of our final product. Hey, B. How's it going? It's going good. How about you? Pretty good too. Say, I was thinking about how we can improve the user interface of our platform. You got any ideas? Yeah, I've been thinking about it too. I think we can improve the color scheme to make it more appealing to our users. That sounds good. What about the layout of the platform? We can try a more intuitive layout to make it easier for new users to navigate around. Yeah, that makes sense. And what do you think about the font style we're using now? I think we can switch it up a bit and use a more modern font to give it a fresher look. Great ideas, B. We can test these changes with focus groups to see if they improve user experience. Definitely. We can also ask for feedback from our regular users to see how they feel about the changes. That's a good idea. We should always consider the feedback of our users so that we can continuously improve their experience on our platform. Exactly. 
And hey, before we wrap this up, have you seen that new show on Netflix? No, I haven't. What show is it? It's called Stranger Things. I highly recommend it. It's a throwback to the 80s. That sounds interesting. Thanks for the recommendation, B. Let me know if you want to watch it together sometime. For sure. Let's plan something soon. Hey, B. It's great to be out here on the beach. Perfect spot to chat about music production. Absolutely, A. So, what's your latest project idea? Well, I want to create a new album that's inspired by the ocean. I want to use natural sounds like waves, birds, and maybe even seals. That sounds awesome, A. How do you plan on incorporating those sounds? I was thinking of recording the sounds myself and then manipulating them in the studio. Maybe even using different effects to make them sound more musical. I love it. Have you thought about any collaborations or guest features? Actually, I was thinking of teaming up with a few local artists like a surfer who plays guitar and a percussionist who can use seashells and driftwood. Nice. Do you have a name for the album yet? Not yet, but I'm brainstorming some ideas. Something like Beachcomber Symphony or Ocean's Melody. Those are perfect names for the album. I can't wait to hear the final product. Thanks, B. I'm excited to get started. We'll have to hit the beach again sometime and talk more about music production. Hey B. Have you ever tried kiwi? It's a popular food in Peru. Kiwi? No, I haven't tried it. What's it like? Kiwi is roasted or fried guinea pig. I know it sounds weird, but it's actually delicious. Really? I don't know if I could get past the idea of eating a guinea pig. I get it, but trust me, it's worth trying. The meat is tender and juicy, and the skin is crispy. Okay, you've convinced me. Where can we find Kiwi in town? There's a Peruvian restaurant downtown that serves it. I can take you there sometime. That sounds like a plan. Do they serve it with any sides? Yeah, typically it's served with potatoes and a spicy sauce. The sauce is the perfect complement to the meat. I love spicy sauces. This is starting to sound better and better. You won't regret it, I promise. Plus, it's a fun way to try a new type of cuisine. I'm always up for new food experiences. Let's plan to go there soon. Sounds good to me. I can't wait to see your reaction when you try kiwi. Ha, ah, me neither. Who would have thought we'd be talking about eating guinea pigs today? Only in Peru, my friend. Only in Peru. Hey there, B. How's it going today? Hey, A. Doing well, thanks. Just trying to make some tweaks to our database to improve website performance. Have you ever dealt with anything like that? Yeah, definitely. What's the issue you're having? Well, it's just taking too long for certain pages to load, and customers are getting frustrated. Got it. How big is your database? Is it optimized? Yeah, but it's still rather large. We are constantly adding new products and customer data. Hmm. Have you tried compressing the database? No, I haven't. How would I go about doing that? You can use tools like gzip to compress the database and improve performance. That should free up some space. Interesting. What about indexing? Yes, that's definitely something to consider. Proper indexing can speed up data retrieval and queries. I see. What about caching? Caching can also help improve performance. Have you considered using a content delivery network? No, I haven't. What's that? A content delivery network essentially stores and delivers all your static content, such as images and videos, on servers all around the world. This makes your website load faster for users around the globe. Oh, that sounds like a great solution. What's the cost involved? Prices can vary, but it's definitely worth looking into. We can take a deeper dive into it later. Sounds good. So, what are some other strategies we can implement? There's always the option of upgrading our hardware, like getting more RAM or a faster CPU. That's true. But that can get expensive. Are there any free solutions? Sure. There are open source database systems we can use, like MySQL or PostgreSQL. Cool, I'll check those out. Any final thoughts on this topic? Yes, just remember to regularly maintain your database by backing it up and optimizing it. This ensures it runs smoothly and efficiently. Great advice. Thanks for your help, A. Hi B, how's it going? Hey, A. Everything's good. What about you? Can't complain. 
So, what brings you to my side of the office today? I was hoping to chat about our product database structure. Ah, the infamous database. Good memories. What's on your mind? Well, I think we could optimize it a bit. Product information is scattered all over the place, and it's hard to extract meaningful insights. I know what you mean. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. What do you suggest? I was thinking we could implement a tagging system to organize the data and maybe add some new fields to capture more info on each product. That sounds like a great idea. Do you think we'll need to migrate the entire database to make these changes? Unfortunately, yes. But I think it'll be worth the effort in the long run. Agreed. By the way, have you seen the new cat sweater we just added? The one with the ears on the hood? That's the one. It's already a bestseller. Ha uh, well, that's good news for our bottom line. But we should make sure we update the database with all the important details. Absolutely. The sweater shall prevail. Ha uh, I'm with you on that. All right, let's get to work on that database. Thanks for your help, eh? Anytime, my friend. Let's make this our best database yet. Hey B, did you get a chance to look into the ISO 27001 security requirements specification? Yeah, I did take a look. It's a pretty hefty document. Tell me about it. My eyes glazed over after the first few pages. I know what you mean. But I have to say, it's pretty thorough. It better be. We want to make sure our security systems are top-notch. Definitely. It's a good thing we have this specification to refer to. Absolutely. Hey, did you see the section on access control? Yeah, that one caught my eye. It's amazing how much detail they go into. I know, right? Sometimes I wonder if they expect us to be mind readers. Ah. Yeah, it can be a bit overwhelming. But it's reassuring to know that we're not missing anything. True, true. And if we ever need to show our clients that we're meeting ISO 27001 standards, we can just whip out this document. Exactly. It's like having a security badge of honor. Oh, speaking of badges, did you catch the section on physical security requirements? Yeah, I did. It's like they're telling us to put up barbed wire and guard dogs. Ha ha ha, right? Maybe we should install a moat around the office too, just for good measure. Hey, that could work. Who needs security cameras when you have a moat? Now you're thinking like a true security expert. Hi there. You must be the engineer from the Ocean Energy Company. I'm glad we finally get to meet. Yes, nice to meet you too. I'm excited to discuss how we can avoid any negative impacts on your fishing activities during our operations in this area. Well, as you know, fishing is our livelihood here, so we need to make sure that we can coexist in harmony with your project. Absolutely. Our team has already conducted several environmental impact assessments, and we are currently implementing mitigation measures such as avoiding sensitive fishing grounds and using low-noise equipment during construction. That's good to hear. But what about the actual operation of the energy platform in the long term? We have designed the platform with several features to avoid interfering with fishing activities, such as including a monitoring system to detect and alert our crew of nearby boats. That sounds impressive. But what if there are any issues that arise during the development or operation of the platform? We have established a communication protocol with local fishermen and we will respond as quickly as possible. We also have a dedicated response team in place in case of emergencies. Well, it sounds like you have thought it all through. I hope this can work out for both of us. We really do hope so. We understand that we are not the only ones trying to make a living out here, so we want to ensure we operate in a sustainable way. I appreciate that. By the way, what do you think of the local seafood here? Have you tried it? As a matter of fact, I tried the seafood chowder from the restaurant down the road last night, and it was amazing. I'm definitely going to have it again before I leave. Huh. That's great to hear. You'll have to try the lobster and crab next. They are my personal favorites. I definitely will. Maybe you can show me the best spots to catch them sometime? Of course, I'll be happy to. Just don't try and steal my secret spots. Ha ha, don't worry, your secrets are safe with me. Thanks for the chat, eh? talk to you soon. Likewise, B. Take care. Hello there. I'm delighted to work in the same shop as a skilled coffee maker like you. Thanks, it's great to work with a pastry chef who knows how to make delicious treats. Yeah, I love making natural, tasty pastries with a French flair. For example, my latest creation is chocolate eclairs filled with fresh vanilla cream. Wow, that sounds scrumptious. 
I might try pairing that with our latest blend of fruity Colombian coffee with a caramel undertone. Sounds like a perfect match. What's your specialty? I love creating espresso beverages with a twist. Today, I have an espresso shot topped with caramel whipped cream and a sprinkle of cinnamon for that extra kick. Oh, that's lovely. I'm sure my almond croissants can go well with that. Absolutely. Your croissants are heavenly. Speaking of which, have you heard about the new trend in the coffee scene? It's called Nitro Cold Brew. Nitro Cold Brew? What's that? It's basically cold brewed coffee infused with nitrogen gas, which gives it a smooth, silky texture and a creamy head like Guinness beer. That's amazing. I have never heard of that before. Can we try it? Sure thing. Let's make some mini cheesecake bites to go with them. Yes, I have some fresh berries that can make a perfect topping. I feel like we're deepening our culinary bond. Me too. We can make the perfect afternoon tea pairings with our combined expertise. Let's work together to create even more mouth-watering treats for our beloved customers. Agreed. Let's raise our glasses to creativity and teamwork. Cheers. Cheers. May our creations bring joy and happiness to the world, one cupcake and one cup at a time. Hi there. I couldn't help but notice your book on child psychology. I'm a psychologist myself. Oh, hello. Yes, I'm an education worker, and I'm always looking for ways to understand my students better. That's great to hear. It's so important to take into account a child's psychological well-being when educating them. Absolutely. I've been exploring ways to help them develop their social-emotional skills, too. That's fantastic. A good foundation in social-emotional learning can help children navigate life's challenges. Exactly. And it really starts with building a strong and positive relationship with them. Yes, building trust is key. And allowing them to express their emotions freely in a safe and supportive environment. I agree completely. We're also working on promoting mindfulness practices and stress management techniques to help our students cope with everyday stressors. That's wonderful to hear. It's so important to teach children early on how to manage their emotions and stress. Yes, and we're integrating these practices into our curriculum so it's a daily routine for our students. That's a great way to ensure it's not just a one-off experience. It'll be interesting to see how these practices impact their overall mental health as they grow older. I'm excited to see the results too. It's important to prioritize children's mental health and well-being, especially during these challenging times. Absolutely right. It's great to see so many educators like yourself taking a more holistic approach to education. Thank you. I'm just glad to do my part. I'm looking forward to learning more about child psychology to further assist my students. Well, if you need any assistance, don't hesitate to reach out. It's always exciting to see others passionate about their work. Good morning. Looks like it's going to be another busy day here at Chattachak Market. Yes, it always is. But that's what makes it exciting. Have you come up with any new pastry recipes lately? Actually, I have. I just made a batch of strawberry lemon tartlets with a buttery crust. Would you like to try one? Sure thing. And if you don't mind, I'd like to pair it with one of my freshly made watermelon juices. That sounds like a great idea. I love how your juices always complement my pastry so well. Thank you. It's all about finding the perfect balance of flavors. Speaking of which, how's your lemon macaron recipe coming along? Ah, uh, I'm still tweaking it. I want to make sure the shells are perfectly crisp and that the filling isn't too sweet. Well, no rush. Take your time and make it just right. In the meantime, let's focus on making today a success. Agreed. Let's show everyone at Chattachak Market just how delicious our pastries and juices can be. By the way, have you tried the new coffee shop that just opened up nearby? I have actually, and their lattes are fantastic. You should stop by and have a cup. Sounds like a plan. And maybe I'll bring back some coffee beans to incorporate into my next pastry creation. That's using your head. I never thought of using coffee in my juices, but it might be worth a try. Absolutely. And that's what I love about being a pastry chef and a juice vendor. We're always discovering new ways to mix and match flavors and ingredients. Exactly. And it's a joy to see the smiles on our customers' faces after they take a sip or a bite. That's the best part. We get to make people happy with our creations. Well said. Now let's get to work and make some more delicious treats. Good morning, sir. How heavy is this cargo we need to deliver today? Good morning. It's not too heavy actually, just around 500 kilos. That's a relief. Could you please tell me how it should be loaded on the plane? 
Sure thing. We need to distribute the weight equally between the front and back sections of the plane. And please make sure to secure the cargo tightly. Absolutely. Safety is our top priority here. By the way, have you been to Tokyo before? Yes, I have. It's a beautiful city with so much to see and do. That's great to know. I've always wanted to visit Tokyo Disneyland. Have you been there? Actually, I haven't been to Disneyland, but I did manage to catch a sumo wrestling match. It was quite an experience. Wow, that sounds really interesting. I haven't watched a sumo wrestling match before, but I heard it can get pretty intense. Yes, it definitely can. But it's a unique cultural experience that shouldn't be missed if you have the chance. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Speaking of cultural experiences, have you tried any traditional Japanese food? Yes, I have. I love sushi and ramen. How about you? Have you tried any Japanese food? Of course, I've had sushi before. But my favorite is definitely tempura. It's so crispy and delicious. That's a great choice. Japanese cuisine has so much to offer. All right, the cargo looks good to go. Thank you for your help. No problem at all. It was great working with you. Have a safe flight. Hey there, son, what a beautiful day to take a stroll in the park. Absolutely. I love spending time outside with you. Do you want to try out the new frisbee I bought? Sure, let's see if you can still throw it as far as you used to. Oh, you want to play that game, huh? Challenge accepted. Laughs, ready when you are, dad. You know, when I was your age, I used to be pretty good at this. Sarcastically, yeah right, dad. You can barely even catch it now. Laughing, okay, you got me there. But I'm not giving up that easily. Smiling, I wouldn't expect anything less from my competitive dad. Catching his breath, you know what, let's take a break and grab an ice cream from that stand over there. Excitedly, yes. Can I get the unicorn flavor? Teasingly, only if you let me have a bite. Smiling, deal. Looking at his son, you know, moments like these make me feel incredibly happy and grateful. Smiling, same here, dad. I couldn't ask for a better role model and friend. Emotionally, that means the world to me, son. Let's make sure we have more days like this. Hugging his father, I promise, Dad. You're my number one adventure buddy. Good morning, where can I take you today? Hi. I'm just sightseeing around Melbourne. Can you recommend some places to visit? Oh, certainly. There are many interesting places to visit in Melbourne. Do you want to start with the famous landmarks like Federation Square or the Melbourne Cricket Ground? Yes, that sounds great. How about taking a ride on the Melbourne Star Observation Wheel? You can enjoy the breathtaking views of Melbourne from high up. That sounds fantastic. How about some food recommendations? If you like seafood, you can take a stroll around the Queen Victoria Market. They have fresh oysters, lobsters, and crabs. Yum, I love seafood. Anything else to explore? You can also check out the street art in Hosier Lane or visit the Royal Botanic Gardens for a quiet retreat. Great, I'll keep those in mind. Have you been to any of these places? Oh yes, I've been to all of them at least a few times. Melbourne is a wonderful city to explore. I agree, I'm having a great time. By the way, do you have any music recommendations? Sure. If you like rock music, you should check out the ACDC Lane, named after the famous Australian rock band. That's cool, I'll definitely check it out. Thanks for all the recommendations. No problem at all, hope you have a great time exploring this beautiful city. Hey B, have you heard about this outdoor activity guide in Queensland's rainforest? No, I haven't. What is it about? It's a comprehensive guide that helps tourists explore the beautiful rainforests of Queensland in a fun and eco-friendly way. That sounds amazing. I love exploring nature and learning about different ecosystems. Yeah, me too. The guide includes information about different trails, wildlife sightings, and even suggests some exciting outdoor activities like ziplining and treetop walking. Wow, that sounds like a real adventure. I would definitely need that guide to make the most of my trip. Absolutely, and it's really easy to get your hands on a copy. You can download it online, or even get one from the local tourist center. I'll definitely check it out. What other recommendations do you have for exploring the rainforest? Well, don't forget to pack some comfortable walking shoes and bring some insect repellent. Also, make sure to respect the wildlife and their habitats. Definitely. I don't want to disturb the natural balance of the rainforest. Thanks for all the helpful tips and recommendations, eh? 
No worries, B. Have a great trip exploring the rainforest of Queensland. Welcome aboard. I hope you're ready for a scenic ride across the Golden Gate Bridge. Yes, absolutely thrilled. The view from here is breathtaking. It sure is. Did you know that the Golden Gate Bridge is one of the most photographed landmarks in the world? Wow, I didn't know that. The bridge looks impressive enough to be a movie set. Absolutely, and speaking of movies, have you seen the famous car chase scene from the movie Bullet that was filmed here on the bridge? I haven't yet, but I'll definitely check it out after this trip. It must have been exhilarating. It was definitely intense, but nothing compared to crossing the bridge in heavy traffic. Good thing we came at a less busy time. Yes, I can imagine. My heart rate would skyrocket in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. You're not alone, B. But with a stunning view, to keep us entertained, time will fly by. For sure. This ride is perfect for a Sunday afternoon while enjoying the cool breeze and taking in the great scenery. Exactly. It's a great way to escape the hustle and bustle of the city and just relax. You're a great driver, eh? Have you been driving for a long time? Thank you. I have been driving for more than a decade now. I still remember my first drive on this bridge like it was yesterday. That's amazing. Do you ever get bored driving the same route every day? Not at all. Every day is different, and I am always on the lookout for new and exciting things to see. I'm sure you are. The view from up here is just incredible. This ride has been a truly memorable experience. Thank you. You're welcome, B. It was my pleasure to take you across the Golden Gate Bridge today. Have a wonderful day. Hey B, have you heard about the new project at the power company? No, what's up with that? They want to implement smart grids using machine learning techniques. Really? That sounds interesting. I'm assuming I would have to work with data from sensors and other sources, right? Yes, you're spot on. Your expertise in machine learning algorithms and techniques should give us valuable insights to optimize energy consumption throughout the grid. I'm totally in. We could look into clustering algorithms and LSTM models to handle time series data. What do you think? Sounds great. And if you were to build a model to forecast energy demand, what kind of data would you use? Hmm. I think I would use historical energy consumption patterns, weather data, and events that may affect energy consumption, like holidays or major events. Speaking of events, do you think we could also use machine learning to help predict and avoid potential faults in the energy grid? Definitely. Imagine being able to predict outages and even prevent them before they happen. We could use anomaly detection or supervised learning algorithms to identify patterns that could indicate a potential fault. This is why we make such a great team. I'll take care of the data engineering part, and you can work your magic with machine learning. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe we'll end up saving the world with our smart grid solutions. Laughing, all in a day's work for a data engineer and a machine learning guy, right? Laughing too, that's right. Let's get started and make it happen. Good morning, class. How was your weekend, B? Hi, A. It was great. I went to the beach with some friends. How about yours? Glad to hear that. My weekend was very relaxing. I watched some movies at home and did some gardening. That sounds nice. Do you have a big garden? Not really, just a small one. I grow some vegetables and herbs, and it's a great way to de-stress. Wow, I'd love to have a garden someday. Maybe when I have my own house. Yes, it's definitely worth trying. Speaking of trying, have you ever tried a yoga class? No, I haven't. But I've heard that it's very relaxing and helps with flexibility. Have you tried it? Yes, I have. It's a great form of exercise and helps calm the mind. Maybe we can go to a class together someday. That sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. Great. Now let's start today's lesson. We're going to learn about idioms and how to use them in our everyday conversations. That sounds interesting. Do you have any favorite idioms? Well, there's when pigs fly, which means something is very unlikely to happen. What about you? I like barking up the wrong tree, which means to make a mistake in judgment about someone or something. Very good choices. Let's see how we can use them in sentences. Today is a perfect day to bake some goodies. I couldn't agree more, Mom. What do you have in mind? I was thinking of making my famous chocolate chip cookies. How about you? I've been wanting to try making a cake from scratch. Do we have all the ingredients? I think so. We have flour, sugar, eggs, butter, and some fresh strawberries. 
Yum. Let's make a strawberry cake then. Can I be in charge of mixing the batter? Of course. I'll prepare the baking pan and preheat the oven. Mom, have you ever tried adding a secret ingredient to your chocolate chip cookies? No, I haven't. What do you suggest? How about a sprinkle of sea salt? It will balance the sweetness of the chocolate. That's a great idea. You sure do have a talent for baking. I learned from the best. Oh no, I accidentally spilled some flour on the floor. Don't worry, we'll clean it up later. Just keep stirring the batter. Can we taste the frosting now? It smells so good. Sure, go ahead. It's just powdered sugar, butter, and mashed strawberries. It's delicious. I can't wait to try the cake. Me too. Let's make sure we don't burn anything in the oven. Don't worry, we've got this under control. Working together, we can conquer anything. That's the spirit, darling. Now let's bake some mouth-watering treats for the whole family to enjoy. Hey B, how's it going? Not bad, just trying to work out the best way to design a really fast and reliable front-end for our new website. Yeah, that's always tricky. What approaches have you been considering? Well, I was thinking we could try using a server-side rendering framework to speed things up. But I'm not sure if that's the best option. Hmm, I'm more of a fan of using client-side rendering myself. We could go with a modern JavaScript framework like React or Vue, which can really speed things up. That's a good point. Those frameworks are definitely faster than older technologies like jQuery. And we could also use something like Webpack to optimize the build process and make sure everything runs smoothly. Absolutely. And we should also make sure we're using a content delivery network to speed up page loading times for users all around the world. Yeah, good idea. And we could also use something like lazy loading to only load the assets that are necessary on each page. Exactly. And we should make sure to use proper image compression as well, so that our images aren't slowing down the page load times. That makes sense. And do you have any tips for making things more reliable? Well, we can use error tracking tools like Sentry to quickly diagnose and fix any problems that arise. And we should also make sure we're doing proper testing and QA to catch any issues before they go live. I'm on board with all of that. I think we're on the right track to designing a really great front end that's both fast and reliable. Agreed. Let's get to work and make it happen. Hey B, how's it going? We have a problem on our hands. The client's website is receiving a massive amount of requests and we need to find a solution ASAP. Hey A, I'm good thanks. Yes, I've noticed that too. We need a plan to handle all of these requests without slowing down the website or causing it to crash. Right. I was thinking about implementing a load balancer to spread the requests evenly across multiple servers. What do you think? That's a good idea, but we also need to make sure that the servers have enough resources to handle the increased demand. Absolutely. We might need to upgrade our servers or add more, but that's something that we can figure out together. Another thing we could do is implement cache for frequently accessed data, which would reduce the number of requests hitting the database. That's a great idea. It would definitely help to speed up the website and reduce server load. Let's make it happen. We also need to keep an eye on the performance metrics to ensure that everything is working well and that we're meeting the client's expectations. Yes, that's important. We could use a monitoring tool to track the server's health and performance. Right. And we should also communicate with the client about these changes and their expected outcomes. Good point. We don't want to surprise them with any changes or have them think that their website is under attack. Exactly. Let's get started on this plan and make sure that the client's website can handle all of the traffic efficiently. Sounds like a plan. Let's do this. Good morning, B. How's everything going? Good morning, A. Everything's going well, thanks. What can I get you today? I think I'll have a latte and one of those chocolate eclairs. Excellent choice. That's one of our most popular pastries. I can see why. It looks delicious. So, have you been busy this morning? Yeah, it's been pretty busy so far. Lots of people stopping by for their morning coffee fix. That's great to hear. How long have you been working here? I've been here for about a year now. It's a fun job, and I love the atmosphere here. That's awesome. I'm new to this bakery. It's nice to know I'm working with a seasoned veteran. What kind of coffee do most people order? Well, everyone has different preferences, but our cappuccino is pretty popular. We also have a lot of regulars who go for our classic drip coffee. I might have to try that cappuccino when I have a chance. 
Speaking of which, did you get a chance to try any of our pastries yet? Yeah, I've tried a few. They're all delicious, but the chocolate croissants are my personal favorite. Oh wow, I haven't tried one of those yet. Now I have something to look forward to. What do you like most about working here? Definitely the team. Everyone is so friendly and helpful, and we all have a passion for what we do. I love hearing that. It's so important to work in a positive environment. Speaking of which, how's your day going? Aside from being busy, it's been pretty good. How about you? I can't complain. I'm enjoying my work, and the customers are all so friendly. It's a great job. That's great to hear. It's a really great place to work, and I'm glad you're enjoying it here. Thanks. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, B. Same here, A. I'm sure we'll see each other around the cafe soon enough. Have a good day. Good morning. I'm in charge of managing this fishing port. How can I assist you today? Hi there. I work for a freight company, and we're looking for ways to improve the transportation of fish from this port. Any suggestions on how we can make it more efficient? Sure. We've recently introduced an electronic billing system that allows quicker processing of documents. And have you heard about our state-of-the-art refrigeration facilities that ensure the freshness of the fish during transport? That sounds impressive. But have you considered using specialized trucks to transport the fish directly from the port to the customers? Yes, we have. However, the cost of maintaining those trucks is quite high, and not all our customers are located nearby. What we've found to be effective is to use a combination of transportation methods, such as shipping and road transport. I see what you mean. It's all about finding the right balance between cost and efficiency. By the way, have you ever tried using drones for aerial delivery? Interesting suggestion. We haven't yet, but it's definitely worth considering in the future. Let me make a note of that. Great. Thanks for your time and helpful insights. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. No problem at all. It's always exciting to explore new ideas that could benefit everyone involved. Feel free to come back anytime with more suggestions. Have a great day. Good morning, B. Ready for today's dive in the Great Barrier Reef? Good morning, A. Yes, I'm so excited. This is my first time diving in such a famous location. Excellent. The weather is perfect, and the visibility is great. We shouldn't have any problems. Just remember to breathe slowly and relax. Thanks for the reminder. I'm a little nervous, but I'm looking forward to seeing all the colorful fish and corals. That's the spirit. Let's start by reviewing some hand signals. Remember, if you need help or if you see something cool, just signal me. Got it. Like this? Makes a gesture with the hand. Yes, that's the OK signal. And this one makes another sign, means stop. You're a quick learner. Thanks. I've been practicing at home. Oh, look over there. Is that a turtle? Yes, it is. Good spotting. That's a green sea turtle, one of the most iconic species in this reef. Wow, it's so beautiful up close. I feel like I'm in a documentary. Ha ha, you're right. This place is like a natural studio for National Geographic. Let's keep going and see what else we can find. Okay, sounds great. I wish I could take a photo to remember this moment forever. You can, actually. We have an underwater camera that you can rent at the dive center. Just ask the staff about it. It's not cheap, but it's worth it. I might do that. But for now, I'll just try to soak it all in. Thank you so much for being my guide, eh? You're welcome, B. It's my pleasure to show you the wonders of the ocean. And who knows, maybe one day you'll become a certified diver and explore other reefs around the world. That would be a dream come true. I can't wait to tell my friends and family about today's adventure. They'll be jealous, for sure. But you can tell them to come here and experience it themselves. The Great Barrier Reef welcomes everyone. Hey B, what have you been working on lately? Well, I've been focusing on improving the accuracy of our self-driving system using machine learning techniques. Wow, that sounds like quite the challenge. How do you plan on tackling it? First, we need to gather a large dataset of real-world driving scenarios and use it to train our models. Then we can fine-tune them to better predict and react to different situations on the road. That makes sense. Do you think we can trust the AI to make the right decisions? With enough data and careful training, I believe we can make the system just as capable as a human driver. Plus, it won't get distracted by text messages or hot coffee. Huh. That's definitely a bonus. 
But what about unexpected road conditions, like a sudden truck tipping over? That's where we need to train the system to recognize anomalies and outliers. We can't predict everything, but we can give it the tools to react appropriately in the moment. I see. I'm not much of a programmer myself, but it sounds like you have everything under control. Can I help in any way? Absolutely. We could use more input on the user interface design and how to communicate critical information to drivers. Plus, it never hurts to have a fresh pair of eyes on the code. Sounds like fun. Let's rock the self-driving car industry like a hurricane. Yeehaw. Let's do it. Hey B, have you tried kebab before? Yeah, I love kebab. Me too. Do you have a favorite kind? I like beef the most, but chicken is also good. What about you? Same here, beef is definitely my favorite. But I've also had lamb kebab before, and it was amazing. Oh, I've never tried lamb. I'll have to give it a try sometime. Definitely. And have you ever had kebab with hummus? Oh yeah, hummus is the perfect dip for kebab in my opinion. I couldn't agree more. And have you ever had kebab with tzatziki sauce? Yes, and it's delicious too. It just gives it that extra kick. I know, right? I also love wrapping my kebab in pita bread with a bunch of veggies. Oh yeah, that's the way to go. It just makes it a complete meal. Absolutely. Have you ever made your own kebab at home? No, I haven't. Have you? Yes. It's actually not that hard. You just need some skewers, meat, and some spices. Hmm, maybe I'll have to try making my own kebab sometime. You definitely should. It's a fun and tasty experience. Thanks for the suggestion, eh? I'm already craving some kebab now. Good morning, B. How are you today? Good morning, eh? I'm doing well, thanks. How about you? I'm great, thanks. So, I'd like to discuss my latest investment ideas with you. Fantastic. I'm all ears. Well, I've been researching some companies in the gaming industry, and I think they have a lot of potential for growth. Interesting. Any particular companies in mind? Yes, I've been keeping an eye on a few companies, like Electronic Arts and Activision Blizzard. Those are definitely some big players in the industry. Have you looked at their financial statements? Yes, I have. They seem to be doing quite well in terms of revenue and profit. That's good to hear. Have you considered any risks involved in investing in gaming companies? Yes, I have. One major risk could be the unpredictability of the industry and how trends can shift quickly. That's definitely a possibility. But I think the industry is growing and has a lot of potential. We can look into it further and see if it's a good fit for your investment portfolio. Great, let's do that. On a lighter note, have you played any good video games lately? Actually, yes. I've been hooked on a game called Among Us. It's pretty fun trying to figure out who the imposter is. I've heard of that one. I'll have to give it a try. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. It's a good break from all the investment research. Definitely. Well, thank you for your time and advice, B. I'll be in touch. Of course, A. Hey, good luck with your investment decisions and have fun playing among us. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to this meeting. Good morning, boss. What's on the agenda for today's meeting? We're going to talk about the new project we're working on. I'd like to hear everyone's ideas. Sounds interesting. What's our timeline like for this project? We have about three months to complete it. I know it's a tight deadline, but I believe we can do it. I'm confident in our team's abilities. Do we have any specific parameters or guidelines we need to follow? Yes, we do. I'll send out an email with all the details later today. Great, I'm looking forward to getting started. On a different note, have you seen the new Star Wars movie yet? Actually, I have. It was amazing. Have you seen it? Not yet. But I've heard great things about it. I plan on seeing it this weekend. You won't be disappointed. It's definitely a must-see for any Star Wars fan. I can't wait. Thanks for the recommendation, boss. No problem. Now, let's get back to work. We have a deadline to meet. Yes, sir. Good evening. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Looking forward to trying out your cuisine tonight. Thanks. What are your taste preferences? I can recommend our signature dishes accordingly. I enjoy all kinds of flavors, but I'm really fond of seafood. Oh, in that case, you have to try our seared scallop with sweet corn puree. It's our bestseller. 
Sounds delicious. How about drinks? What would you recommend I try with that? I highly recommend our house white wine with the scallops. It's an amazing flavor combination. Perfect. And what about dessert? I'd suggest you try our chocolate cake with homemade raspberry sorbet. It's decadent and refreshing at the same time. Yum. You're making my mouth water. Chef, how long have you been a chef? I have been working in kitchens for over 15 years. It's my passion. That's amazing. What's the most challenging dish you've ever had to create? Well, we once had a customer who was allergic to everything except water and rice. It was quite challenging creating a dish with just those two ingredients. But we managed to create a delicious rice porridge that the customer loved. Wow, that's impressive. You really are a talented chef. Thank you. It's all about passion, creativity, and dedication. I couldn't agree more. Thank you for this delightful experience, chef. I'll definitely be coming back for more. My pleasure, Foodie B. We look forward to serving you again soon. Hi B, happy anniversary. I can't believe it's been a year since we tied the knot. Thank you, A. Time really flies. I'm excited to celebrate with you. Me too. I made a reservation at this fancy restaurant. I heard the food is amazing. That sounds great. What's on the menu? They have a special anniversary set with lobster pasta and steak. Yum, I love lobster. And steak? You know the way to my heart. Haha, <laughs> of course I do. I also ordered a bottle of our favorite wine, just for tonight. Ah, that's so sweet. Cheers to us. Cheers. You know, I'm really grateful for our partnership. Me too. We make a great team, don't we? Definitely. And we've had so many adventures already. Remember when we went hiking in Japan? Oh man, that was challenging, but so rewarding. And we got to try all those delicious snacks too. Yes, like those rice crackers and matcha ice cream. We always have such a good time together. Agreed. I'm looking forward to more memories with you. And more delicious food. Haha, <laughs> same here. I'm already eyeing the dessert menu. Shall we share something sweet? Absolutely. Life is short, let's indulge a little. You said it, partner. Here's to many more happy anniversaries to come. Cheers to that, my love. Hi there. Are you ready for the photo shoot? Absolutely. I am so excited to be working with you. Great to hear that. Let's start with some poses by the slot machines. Sure thing. Should I hold a handful of coins? Yes, that's a good idea. And if you could give me a big smile too, that would be perfect. Got it. How about over there by the roulette table? Perfect. Let's capture some shots of you throwing the ball into the spinning wheel. Wow, this is really fun. How about we strike a pose in front of the fountain outside? Yes, let's try some poses with the fountain in the background. Can you give me a fun and playful expression? Of course. How about some shots of me sitting at one of the blackjack tables? That's a great idea. Try holding a hand of cards and pretending to be deep in thought. All right, I'm ready. This has been such a great experience. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Let's review the shots we've taken and see if we need any more. Sounds good to me. Thanks so much. Hey, have you heard of ISO 27001 Social Engineering? Yeah, I have. That's a fancy way to trick people into giving away their confidential information, right? Exactly. But it's not just about tricking people, it's also about raising awareness and preventing these kinds of attacks. I see what you mean. It's like the con part of confidence game. Yep, and speaking of games, have you ever played Two Truths and a Lie? Oh yeah, I love that game. Well, ISO 27001 Social Engineering is like playing the opposite of that game. You have to figure out which statement is the lie and not fall for it. That's a good analogy. And it's not just about email phishing, but also in-person interactions and phone calls. Right, and it's not just about preventing attacks on your organization, but also protecting your personal information as well. Yeah, because we all have that one relative who falls for every scam email they receive. Haha, <laughs> true. So, I guess the ultimate goal of ISO 27001 Social Engineering is to make us all a little bit more skeptical and a little bit less trusting. That sounds like a good thing to me. Can't be too careful these days. Agreed. So, how about we play a quick round of two truths and a lie to practice our skepticism skills? Oh, you're on. 
Hey, Director B. How's it going? Hey there, Actor A. It's going great. How's the shoot going for you? It's been good. A little tired, but I always love being on set. That's great to hear. So, how's it going with your character? Any new developments? Yeah, actually. I got to do my own stunts in today's scene. It was a lot of fun. Wow, that's impressive. You're quite the daredevil. Laughs, you could say that. But it's always fun to try something new and push myself. Definitely. That's what this industry is all about. Speaking of which, have you seen any good movies lately? Oh yeah, I just saw that new superhero flick. It was really cool, lots of action and great effects. Nice. I've been meaning to catch that one. Superhero movies always get me excited. Same here. I mean, who doesn't love a good underdog story? Plus, the special effects always leave me in awe. For sure. All right, let's get back to work. We only have a few hours of daylight left. Sounds good. See you on set, Director B. See you, Actor A. Let's make this scene amazing. Hi there, B. How's it going? Hey, A. Just trying to get through this ISO 27001 audit. How about you? Same here. Say, have you found any interesting security vulnerabilities so far? Well, I did find one system where the password was set to password. It was so bad it was almost funny. Laughs, yeah, I can see why. Did you let them know they needed to change it? Of course. I sent a friendly reminder email immediately. Good call. Any other funny things you've run into? Actually, yeah. One of the employees had a post-it note on their monitor with their password. Talk about a security risk. Chuckles, I guess some people need a little help remembering their passwords. But yeah, definitely not good. So true. Hey, have you seen the break room? They've got some pretty good snacks in there. Smiling, oh yes, I made sure to check that out. Those chocolate chip cookies were divine. I've got my eye on those Doritos. But first, let's finish up this audit before we get too sidetracked. Agreed. Let's see what else we can uncover. Hopefully, nothing too ridiculous. Laughs, no kidding. But hey, if we do find anything, at least it'll make for an interesting story to tell later. Hey, have you heard about the ocean climate change that's been happening lately? Yes, it's crazy how much impact it's having on the environment. Yeah, and it's not just affecting the sea creatures, but also the humans that rely on them. I agree, it's alarming how many people are losing their source of food and livelihood. It's exciting to see some companies getting more sustainable and reducing their carbon footprint. Definitely, but there's still so much more that needs to be done to reduce the effects of climate change. That's true, but it all starts with small actions from individuals like us. Absolutely, even things like reducing plastic usage and taking public transportation can make a difference. And it's not just about being eco-friendly, but also ensuring a better future for the next generation. You're right, we need to be more responsible and conscious of the impact our actions have. Have you heard of any new initiatives or technologies that are helping combat ocean climate change? Actually, I read about a project that's using artificial reefs to help protect and restore coral reefs. That's amazing. It's great to see new ideas and solutions being developed. Definitely, and it's up to all of us to support and encourage these efforts. Let's continue to stay informed and do our part to protect the oceans and the planet as a whole. Absolutely, together we can make a difference and create a better future for all. Day mate, it's a beautiful day in Tasmanian waters. Yes, it is. I'm looking forward to learning some local seafood dishes from you. Happy to teach you some of our traditional recipes. First up, let's try some fresh lobsters. That sounds great. How do we prepare them? We boil them for about 10 minutes and then serve them with melted butter and lemon wedges. Yum. I can't wait to taste it. What's next on the menu? We have abalone, scallops, and maybe some Australian salmon. What's your favorite seafood? I love scallops. How do you recommend cooking them? You can saute them with garlic and herbs, or grill them with a sprinkle of lemon juice. Sounds delicious. Can we also try some Tasmanian oysters? Of course. We can have them raw with a dash of Tabasco sauce or baked with Parmesan cheese. That sounds perfect. I'm already drooling. Laughs, well, get ready for some seafood feast. Let's catch some more lobsters and abalones. Let's do it. I'm sure we'll have a great time cooking and eating. Absolutely. 
That's the beauty of Tasmanian life, fresh seafood, good company, and stunning nature. Hi there, welcome to our airport. Can I help you with anything? Hi, thank you. I'm actually the chef for the airline that operates here. I'm here to discuss the in-flight dining options. Great, let's sit down and talk about it. We always try to offer the best dining options to our passengers. What do you have in mind? Well, we are thinking of introducing some new dishes to our menu, incorporating local flavors and fresh ingredients of the region. That sounds exciting. Do you have any specific dishes in mind? Yes, we are thinking of adding some Indian and Southeast Asian dishes to the menu. The flavors are rich and aromatic, and I'm sure they will be well received. That's a good idea. I'm sure the travelers will appreciate some variety in their meals. What about vegetarian options? Of course, vegetarian dishes are also on our menu. In fact, we have a few vegan options as well. That's great to hear. Our airport serves passengers from all over the world with different dietary preferences. I understand. We also ensure that our dishes cater to the tastes and preferences of international travelers. That's good to know. What about the presentation of the food? We prioritize the aesthetics of the dishes, ensuring that they look as good as they taste. We use quality ingredients and focus on the details of food presentation. That's fantastic. I'm sure the passengers will appreciate the effort. We will work with you to make sure that the dining experience is enjoyable for them. Thank you. It's always great to have a collaborative partner. I'm looking forward to working together to offer the best dining experience to our passengers. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to work with you too. Thank you for taking the time to discuss this with me. My pleasure. Have a great day and see you soon. Good morning, how can I assist you today? Hi, I need some legal advice regarding my recent accident on the road. Sure, I'm happy to help. Can you provide me with more information about what happened? Well, I was hit by a car while crossing the street. Okay, were you injured in the accident? Yes, I suffered a broken arm and some bruises. I see. Do you have any witnesses to support your claim? Yes, there were a few people who saw what happened and can attest to it. Great, that will definitely strengthen your case. Have you filed a police report yet? Yes, I did that immediately after the accident. Excellent. In that case, we can file a lawsuit against the driver's insurance company to cover your medical expenses and other damages. Thank you so much for your help, I really appreciate it. No problem at all, it's my job to assist you. Is there anything else you need advice on? Not at the moment, but I'll definitely come back to you if I need more legal help. Sounds good. Have a good day and take care of yourself. Good morning, B. I heard that you are the expert in natural language processing. Can you share some insights on how we can use this technology to improve our customer service? Hi, A. Hey. Sure thing. Natural language processing has the power to enhance customer experience by allowing computers to understand and respond to human language, making the interactions more efficient and personalized. That sounds interesting. How can we incorporate natural language processing into our company's customer service system? We can start by implementing a chatbot that can handle customer inquiries and provide automated responses. Ah, uh, I see. But wouldn't the customers feel like they're talking to a robot? Not if we design the chatbot to have a natural-sounding conversation and provide tailored solutions based on the customer's needs. Okay. What else can we do to utilize the natural language processing technology? We can also use sentiment analysis to analyze customer feedback and improve our services accordingly. How does that work? Sentiment analysis allows us to identify the emotions and opinions behind the customer feedback, enabling us to respond to their needs and concerns more effectively. That sounds like it would save us a lot of time and effort in analyzing customer feedback. Exactly. It utilizes machine learning algorithms to analyze large volumes of data quickly, making it a highly efficient and effective tool. Do you have any examples of companies that are already utilizing natural language processing in their customer service systems? Yes, there are many examples of companies that are using chatbots and other natural language processing tools to improve customer experience, such as Amazon, Apple, and several airlines. Wow, that's impressive. How can we ensure that our company's natural language processing system is effective and accurate? We can train our system using large datasets and continually evaluate its performance to ensure that it remains accurate and effective. Okay, that makes sense. What are some of the challenges that we might encounter when implementing natural language processing in our company? There may be issues with accuracy and understanding, especially for customers who use non-standard language, slang, or regional dialects. I see. So what can we do to overcome these challenges? 
We can continuously train and improve our system and also provide options for customers to speak to a human representative if they have complex or unique issues. Great. It seems like natural language processing is a powerful tool that can really improve our customer service. Thanks for sharing your insights, B. No problem, A. It was great chatting with you about the exciting possibilities of natural language processing. Hi there, I'm a flight attendant. Do you work here at the airport? Hello, yes, I do. I work as a ground staff member. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Can you tell me a little bit about the baggage handling process here at the airport? Sure. Once passengers check in their luggage, it goes through an x-ray machine for security screening, then it's loaded onto a conveyor belt that takes it to the baggage handling area. From there, it's sorted based on destination and loaded onto the right plane. Ah, uh, I see. Do you ever have any issues with lost luggage? Unfortunately, it does happen sometimes. But we have a system in place to try and locate lost luggage and get it back to the owner as soon as possible. That's good to hear. I once had my luggage lost for two days, and it was a nightmare. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. Did you end up getting it back? Yes, thankfully. But it made me appreciate the importance of reliable baggage handling. Definitely. We take the responsibility of handling passengers' luggage very seriously. Speaking of baggage, do you have any travel tips for packing efficiently? Well, from my experience, rolling clothes instead of folding them can save a lot of space. And packing lightweight items in your shoes can also free up some room. Great advice, thank you. I'll remember that for my next trip. No problem at all. Is there anything else you'd like to know about the airport's baggage handling process? I think that's all for now. Thank you so much for your help and insights. You're welcome. Have a great flight. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 cryptography? Hey A, yeah I have. It's all about keeping our data safe and secure, right? That's right B. It's a standard for managing sensitive information using cryptographic techniques. Hmm, interesting. So does that mean we all have to be secret agents to use it? Haha, <laughs> not at all. It just means we have to use some cool codes and algorithms to protect our data. Ah, uh, I see. So like, would using a Caesar cipher count as cryptography? Definitely, but with ISO 27001 cryptography, we have to use more complex methods to ensure proper security. Got it. But what happens if we accidentally forget the secret code? Oh no. That's why we have to make sure we keep the codes in a safe and secure place, or use password managers. Good point. So, do you think we can be certified in ISO 27001 cryptography? Absolutely, but it requires a lot of training and experience. We should definitely consider it if we want to become experts. Cool. Let's become the next James Bonds of data security with ISO 27001 cryptography. Haha, <laughs> sounds like a plan B. Let's keep our data safe and secure with some fun cryptographic techniques. Hi there. I'm the backend engineer assigned to work on the employee database project. I'm really excited to collaborate with a talented database administrator like you. Hi. It's nice to meet you too. I'm sure we can come up with an effective solution for our company's HR needs. Definitely. So, have you worked on managing large amounts of employee data before? Yes, I've been managing databases for several years now. The key is to keep everything organized and well-structured. That makes sense. Do you think we can use any existing software to facilitate our project? Well, there are a few options out there, but it could be more cost-effective to create a customized solution. I see. Speaking of cost, I'm wondering if we can get funding for this project. Of course, we just need to prepare a convincing proposal and present it to our superiors. That's great. Do you have any ideas for making the database user-friendly? We could create a dashboard with graphs and charts that display the employee data in an easy-to-digest manner. That sounds like a good idea. We could also incorporate search filters to help HR easily locate information. Excellent suggestion. It's important to make sure the system is user-friendly for the company's HR team. Right. And what about data privacy and security? How do we assure that confidential information is protected? We can implement strong password policies and limit access to certain fields. We should also encrypt sensitive data. That makes sense. Thanks for your input. I'm looking forward to discussing this further with you. Likewise. I think we can come up with a solution that will streamline HR processes and provide benefits for the entire company. Hey B, have you ever had a quesadilla before? Of course, who hasn't? I love those cheesy creations. 
Me too. And there are so many different ways to make them. Have you tried any interesting twists on the classic recipe? Actually, I have. My favorite one was with sweet potato and black beans. It was like a fiesta in my mouth. Wow, that sounds amazing. I've never tried that before, but now I'm definitely going to have to give it a shot. You definitely should. I mean, who doesn't love a little extra veggie action on their quesadilla? Absolutely, and speaking of veggies, have you tried making a breakfast quesadilla with scrambled eggs and veggies? Yes, I have. It's such a great way to start the day, and you can customize it with any veggies you have on hand. That's true. Plus, if you're feeling really crazy, you can add in some bacon or sausage for an extra kick. Oh yeah, that's definitely taking it up a notch. But hey, sometimes you just need that extra bit of indulgence in your life. Absolutely. And speaking of indulgence, have you ever had a dessert quesadilla? I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it's delicious. Hmm, I'm not sure I'm sold on the idea of a sweet quesadilla. But I'm willing to give it a try. You won't regret it. I've had ones with Nutella and bananas, or even just cinnamon and sugar. It's like a chow, but in quesadilla form. Okay, you're starting to convince me. You really can't go wrong with anything involving Nutella. Exactly. So, when are we going to get together and have a quesadilla party? How about this weekend? I'll make some sweet potato and black bean ones, and you can bring your favorite twist on the classic recipe. Sounds perfect. I can't wait to chow down on some quesadillas with my favorite foodie friend. Wow, look at all the rides they have here. Which one do you want to go on first, B? I want to go on the Ferris wheel, Dad. Can we ride it together? Sure thing, let's get in line. We'll have a great view of the whole park from up there. Whoa, this is really high up. Look at all the people down there, they look like ants. It's kind of peaceful up here, don't you think? And we can see the entire park from up top. Yeah, it's like we're on top of the world. Can we go on the roller coaster next? Absolutely. I'll admit, I'm a little scared of roller coasters, but I'll be brave for you, B. Don't worry, Dad. I'll hold your hand the whole time. We'll scream our heads off together. Haha, <laughs> okay. It's a deal. Looks like we might have to wait in line for a little while though. That's okay, we can people watch while we wait. Look at that kid over there, he's eating an ice cream cone bigger than his face. Ha, huh, yeah. There are some interesting characters here today. But hey, we're pretty interesting too, right? Definitely. I'm having so much fun with you today, Dad. Thank you for bringing me here. Of course, B. Spending time with you is always the highlight of my day. Hey there. I heard we're working on developing a self-learning chatbot. That sounds exciting. Yes, we are. It's going to be a challenge, but I think we can do it. Definitely. So, what do you think are the most important features we need to include in the chatbot? Well, it should definitely have natural language processing capabilities so it can understand what people are saying and respond appropriately. Agreed. But we also need to make sure it's able to learn and adapt over time, right? Yes, that's the most important part. We want the chatbot to be able to improve itself and become smarter with every conversation it has. So, how do we train it to learn and improve? We'll start by giving it a large enough dataset to learn from, and then it will use machine learning algorithms to analyze and interpret that data. That makes sense. But how do we make sure it doesn't go rogue and start spouting gibberish? Well, we'll have to continuously monitor its conversations and make adjustments as needed. Plus, it will have built-in fail-safes to prevent any major mishaps. Ah, good point. I'm excited to see how this chatbot turns out. Do you think it will be able to pass the Turing test? Who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But either way, it will definitely be a cool project to work on. Definitely. Hey, speaking of chatbots, have you ever talked to any of those silly chatbots on social media? Yes, I have. They can be pretty funny sometimes. Ha, huh, totally. I remember one time I asked a chatbot what its favorite kind of pizza was, and it responded with I don't know, I'm a robot. Haha, ha, that's great. I think our chatbot will have a much more sophisticated sense of humor though. Well, considering we're the ones building it, I certainly hope so. Hey, B, I was thinking about our testing process. Do you think there are any areas for improvement? Definitely. I think we could be more efficient with our testing cycles. What do you think? I agree. But have you ever considered implementing automated testing? Interesting idea. Can you explain how that would work? Sure. 
we could use a testing framework that would allow us to write automated tests that would run automatically on each build. That sounds like a good plan. But wouldn't that be expensive? Not really. The initial cost for implementing automation could be a bit high, but it would save us loads of time in the long run. Makes sense. How would we go about finding the right testing framework? We could do some research and testing to find the best fit for our needs. I've done some research on some frameworks that I think might work well for us. Great, why don't you share your findings with me? Okay, so I think TestNG and JUnit could be good options for us. They are easy to use and have good documentation. Awesome. Let's look into it and see if we can get started with automated testing. Sounds like a plan. We could even use continuous integration tools like Jenkins to help us implement automation. I like the sound of that. We could have automatic tests running continually in the background, freeing up our testing team to focus on other tasks. Exactly. And we could also use reporting tools to help us track our testing progress and detect issues quickly. That's a great idea. We could even set some key performance indicators to track our progress. Yes, and we could use the results of our automated testing to identify areas of the software that need improvement. This could be a game changer for us. We can improve our testing process and also optimize our software at the same time. Absolutely. And with the time saving that automation provides, we can focus on bettering the software even more. I'm excited to get started with this. Thanks for bringing it to my attention, A. No problem, B. I'm always looking for ways to improve our processes. Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001 Information Security? Sure thing. It's a standard for information security management systems, right? Yep, that's correct. I'm actually considering getting certified in it. Really? That's impressive. Any idea what the certification requirements are? Well, you need to have a good understanding of risk management and security controls. That sounds difficult. Have you started studying yet? Yeah, I'm taking an online course right now. It's pretty engaging, actually. Haha, <laughs> you and your geeky online courses. But in all seriousness, it's great that you're taking it seriously. Thanks, I'm really excited to learn more about data protection and compliance requirements. It's so important for companies these days, especially with all the data breaches happening. Exactly. Speaking of data breaches, did you hear about the one at Equifax? Yeah, it's crazy how much personal information was stolen. That's why we need ISO 27001. Yes, and it's not just for companies. It can also apply to individuals who want to better protect their sensitive information. I didn't know that. Maybe I should look into it too. Definitely. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Plus, it's impressive to have ISO 27001 certification on your resume. You're right. I might just sign up for that online course too. It sounds pretty interesting after all. Awesome, we can study together and geek out over information security. Hi there, Nurse B. How's it going? I'm doing pretty good today, Dr. A. How about you? Can't complain. The weather outside is pretty nice. Yeah, it's a nice break from all the recent rain we've been having. Absolutely. So, how's our patient doing today? They're resting comfortably right now. Surgery went smoothly. That's great to hear. How about our surgical team? Any issues during the procedure? Nothing too major, just a couple of minor hiccups that we were able to handle without a problem. Glad to hear it. You know, I was thinking of trying out that new Italian restaurant down the street. Want to join me for lunch later? Sounds like a plan. I could use a good plate of pasta. Perfect. Shall we say 1 p.m.? Works for me. Thanks for inviting me, Dr. A. No problem, Nurse B. We make a great team here at the hospital, but it's always nice to take a break and enjoy some good food. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Hey, have you taken any certifications or exams before? Yeah, I've taken a few. Why do you ask? I'm trying to figure out which certification agency to use. Do you have any suggestions? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. Have you considered TOEIC? I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. What's TOEIC all about? TOEIC stands for Test of English for International Communication. It's a widely recognized certification that measures your English language skills. That sounds interesting. Is it difficult to pass? It can be challenging, but if you study and practice regularly, you can definitely pass. What kind of topics does TOEIC cover? 
It covers a variety of business-related topics such as finance, marketing, HR, and more. I'm definitely interested in improving my business English skills. Then TOEIC is definitely worth considering. It can help you stand out in your job search and advance your career. Do you think employers value TOEIC certification? Absolutely. It shows you have a strong command of the English language, which is essential in today's global business world. How long does it take to prepare for TOEIC? It depends on your current level of English, but I'd recommend studying for at least a few months. There are plenty of resources out there to help you prepare. Thanks for the information. I'll definitely look into TOEIC as an option. No problem. Let me know if you have any other questions or need any help preparing. I'm happy to lend a hand. Hello there, how can I help you today? Hi, I was just prescribed some medication, but I'm not sure how to properly use it. No worries, I'm here to help. What's the name of the medication? It's called amoxicillin. Okay, that's an antibiotic. It's important to take it exactly as prescribed and to complete the entire course, even if you start feeling better. Got it. Should I take it with food? Yes, it's best to take it with food to avoid any stomach upset. And are there any side effects of this medication? Yes, some people may experience stomach pain, diarrhea, or a rash. If you experience any severe symptoms, such as difficulty breathing or swelling, you should seek medical attention immediately. Thank you so much for your help. Of course, and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any further questions or concerns. It's important to use medication safely to avoid any adverse reactions. Will do. Thanks again. Good morning. How's it going, B? Hey, hey, doing well. How about you? Pretty good, thanks. So, I heard you're working on a new e-commerce project? That's right. It's a pretty big undertaking, but we have a good team working on it. That's great. As a software tester, I'm very interested in knowing how you plan to test the site. Well, we're going to start with functional testing, making sure all the buttons and links work correctly. Then we'll move on to compatibility testing and user acceptance testing. What about load testing and security testing? Yes, those are important too. We've already planned for load testing to make sure the site can handle a large number of users, and we've also hired external security experts to do penetration testing. It sounds like you've got all your bases covered. I'm excited to test the site when it's ready. Definitely. We're also planning to set up a staging environment for you to test in, so you can catch any bugs before the site goes live. Awesome, that'll make my job a lot easier. Have you considered using any automated testing tools? Yes, we have. We're planning to use Selenium for web automation testing and JMeter for load testing. That's great to hear. It'll save a lot of time and effort. Anyway, let's switch gears. What coffee are you having today? I'm having a latte. How about you? Same. Looks like we have good taste. Both chuckle. I'll let you in on a secret. I always add a sprinkle of cinnamon to my latte. It gives it an extra kick. Oh, that's a good tip. I'll have to try that next time. Thanks for sharing, B. Anytime, A. It's always fun to share coffee tips with fellow enthusiasts. Hello there. I'm a cheesemonger, and I couldn't help but notice that you're a bartender. Would you like to try some French cheese and wine pairings? Of course. I would love that. What do you recommend? How about we start with a nice bottle of Bordeaux and some Roquefort cheese? The sharp and salty flavor of Roquefort is the perfect match for the full-bodied wine. That sounds like a great pairing. What other cheeses do you have? We also have some Brie, Camembert, and Conte. They all go well with a variety of red and white wines. Hmm, I'm partial to red wine. What do you suggest with the Brie? Brie pairs well with Pinot Noir. The light fruitiness of the wine matches the creamy and buttery texture of the cheese. That sounds delicious. Can we try the Camembert too? Definitely. Camembert pairs perfectly with a nice Merlot. The smooth and velvety wine complements the earthy and mushroomy flavors of the cheese. Wow, you really know your stuff. This is such a great tasting experience. Thank you. I love sharing my knowledge and passion for cheese with others. Would you like to try the Conte as well? Yes, please. What do you recommend with Conte? A crisp and acidic Chardonnay is the perfect match for Conte. The nutty and caramelized flavors of the cheese are balanced out by the refreshing wine. That sounds like a great pairing to end our tasting. Thank you for introducing me to these amazing French cheeses and wines. It was my pleasure. I'm glad you enjoyed it. 
Don't hesitate to stop by my shop if you ever want to try more varieties. Good evening. Welcome to our restaurant. What can I get for you today? Hi there. I'd like to try some of your chef's special dishes, please. Great choice. What type of cuisine are you in the mood for today? I'm feeling adventurous. Can you suggest something unique? Absolutely. We have a fusion dish that combines Italian and Chinese flavors. Would you like to give it a try? Sounds interesting. Can you tell me more about it? Sure. It's our signature dish, a crispy duck confit with homemade noodles and spicy garlic tomato sauce. Wow, that sounds delicious. I'll have that, please. Excellent choice. And to drink, would you like our sommelier to recommend a wine pairing for you? Yes, please. Something that complements the flavors of the dish. Certainly. How about a Chianti Classico Reserva? It has a robust flavor that pairs well with the duck confit. Sounds perfect. I'll try that. Great. And may I suggest our homemade tiramisu for dessert? It's a customer favorite. I love tiramisu. I'll definitely add that to my order. Wonderful. Your order is complete. Please enjoy your meal and don't hesitate to let me know if you need anything else. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to trying the food. By the way, how long have you been working here? I've been working here for five years now. It's a pleasure to serve customers like you. That's amazing. You must be an expert on the menu by now. Indeed, I do have a few personal favorites. If you'd like, I can recommend some dishes for your next visit. That would be fantastic. I'll definitely come back here again. Thank you for your great service. You're welcome. Our team always strives to provide the best dining experience for our customers. Have a wonderful evening.